Hey, before we start today's show, can we just all for a second discuss something that happened on the air yesterday? Um, I mentioned Ruthie Edelson, the chief marketing officer from Tory Holistics, introduced me to a group of guys from Hellman Valley Growers Company. And turns out these are all former Marines who have come back and they're dealing with whether it's physical injuries or PTSD type injuries. And um, they're using cannabis as a way to help um, veterans get off of opiates and you know be addicted to pills. And so they're, they, they sell these products, HVGC in Tory Holistics, and then all of the profits are going into these, these military charities and really into all this research to help all these veterans. What'd you guys think of Brian Buckley yesterday? I thought it was fantastic. I thought anytime you get people who are willing to sacrifice, pay their sacrifice and then come back and realize that there's something wrong after already sacrificing and then continuing to try to fix things that they see wrong in our society is, 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 is amazing. All those people should always be uh, highly respected. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you think Grande? I hope my mom watches those interviews because that stigma around cannabis being like some, like don't uh, say no to drugs. That was all the campaign that we all grew up with, with the dare program. And the fact that we still classify cannabis in that, same breath as opiates and all these other things is just ridiculous to me and i think the more people that brian get their message out there the more funding they get for studies that he's already talking about with human trials on the effects of cannabis the better it is the better this country will be in the long haul so all right I, so, I mean but his story is how can you even like what what can you say about his story i'm sure the details are crazy yeah so listen here's what i want to say to everybody when you go to tory holistics this brand right here, over here on this shoulder, this brand right here, over here. I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, there. There it is. There it is. This brand right here. There you go. HVGC right here. I'm pointing to it on the screen. <laughs> HVGC. This brand right here, when you go to Tory Holistics and you buy this brand of THC cartridge, for those of you that are out there that are vapors, okay, if you buy their brand, that money is going to help military veterans through Battle Brothers, which is an organization that they all support. So look, I'll make it real quick. We had him on yesterday because we wanted to hear his story and because they're a new sponsor. HVGC, you buy them at Tory Holistics. Hey, great friends, what's happening? It's Wednesday afternoon, and we're just getting kicked off here on Kaplan and Crew. Hope everybody's having a great day wherever you're at. Listen, if you are watching on YouTube, I know it's early. People are just coming onto YouTube. I mostly watch on YouTube, so I'm part of the YouTube chat, and I see the numbers grow as the day goes on. So I want to say to all of you who are YouTubers, make sure you like, Make sure you are a subscriber, make sure you comment. And then really, I would say you should get involved in our YouTube chat, which is right over here to the right. If you're using your phone, it's live chat. So listen, if you're a YouTuber, glad you're here. If you're a Facebooker, I'd like to grow our audience on Facebook. I'll be completely, totally honest. And this is kind of weird, but I remember when our friend coach John Quintero, wonderful, marvelous, ball plurer, when, when Coach Quintera left 1090 and he decided, hey, I'm out of 1090, because you remember the story was Coach was pissed because Cilio got a new contract, so Coach resigned. That story aside, Coach like was out doing a show on Facebook, and I was like, what's he doing? Like A show on Facebook? And as it turns out, we're doing a show on Facebook. And guess what? There's a lot of people. So if you're on Facebook, click the share button, start a watch party, Get your friends to be part of the great friends. And if you're on any of the audio podcast platforms, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Apple, make sure you're a subscriber because this way we can send you our latest stuff. And then I'll just say one last thing. And I realized it yesterday, and I, I know this is going to sound a little weird, but um, I realized this yesterday. I used to get into my car and I, like so many others, still a traditionalist as in turn on my radio. Now, if you got a Tesla, no radio, right? I mean, it's like all apps. If you've got a brand new BMW, they may not even install an AM radio in the car. 
But if you're a traditional person who gets in the car, turns on the radio and expects to hear what you want on the radio, I tried to convince people for the last 18 months, you don't need the radio, but I like you get in the car, turn on the radio and expect to hear what I want to hear. I actually said to my daughter yesterday, and I even said to my best pal up in LA, I said, I said, you know, man, it's so cool what we've been able to do this year because for as many people that are, that are out there that have lost their jobs, lost their businesses, have had to change careers or maybe have wanted to change careers, um, for people who've struggled in 2020, the fact of the matter is, beginning of 2020, we weren't on the radio. Here we are, late October, and not only are we on all these platforms, YouTube, Facebook, et cetera, blah, 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 but we're also back on the radio. And that really is cool because I kept getting in my car when we weren't on the radio and thinking, this sucks that we're not on the radio. And as much as I try to convince myself that we didn't need to be on the radio, there are a lot of people that still wanted us on the radio. So anyway, I'm, I'm just kind of giving you some opening thoughts here this afternoon. Hope everybody's great. Let me say hola, hermano numero uno, rep in the 805 in the house, Ventura County, Oxnard, California. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, hermano numero uno grande, Alejandro Padilla in la casa. Hola, que paso? October 21st, the day we finally kicked the heat wave. It, I love this weather. I grew up in Oxnard where I grew up every single morning with fog, with clouds, with cold, cool mist. And waking up to this weather today, having that cold, cool mist, it's fantastic, man. I Listen, I don't know about you guys. Those big fellas, we don't love those 95 degree days, those 98 degree days. Not my favorite day. Today, I love it. Under 70, all day, cloudy. Give it to me. I don't know, but I listen, sh Chicago, it gets cold over there. I get it. But this is right here, ideal weather today. I love mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels like it's finally broken, right? It feels like we had this heat. A lot of times in October, get really super hot, dude, like smoking hot. Um, and I, I always thought about that because I would be doing charger television broadcasts in October. And um, wearing that CBS blazer, which was, you know, really dark blue and a shirt and a tie, you know, and they wouldn't let you wear sunglasses on TV. So I had to take the sunglasses off and I couldn't see a damn thing because it was so bright and hot. It was hot. October is always hot for some reason. Yep. And, and so, yeah, it feels now like the weather is broken, you know. So uh, listen, let me say this good afternoon. Our, this is our seasons. We don't get seasons. We get hot in this. And I like it. Yeah. Yeah. My son actually told me the other day, uh, he's excited to go visit his friend at Indiana university for his birthday. Cause it's getting cold there and he likes it. And he's like, you know, it's so boring here. No seasons. I'm like, let me tell you something, pal, uh, go live in the snow for a few years. Okay. Go, go have to live that snowy life. You'll see how much better this is than anywhere else in the world. I mean the world dude. I mean, even when I was a kid and I grew up in Florida, Florida is balls hot. Number one. And then number two, during the summer, it rains every day at three o'clock. Every day, three o'clock, here come the, the, the gray skies, lightning, rain, pour like a mofo, and then back to, uh, to normal. But then it would get steamy hot. So this is the greatest place in the world. I'm telling you that right now. Here's a man from the south side of Chicago, six foot, seven inches tall, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max, bringing the street cred. Ladies and gentlemen. John Browner, JB, Big Brown in the house. It's What's Up Wednesday. I'm just going to start naming the days. It's What's Up Wednesday. I got to give a what's up to Clayton Kershaw last night. Because last time I heard around here, he was Kurt Choke. And I told you the goats show up when it's go time. And he was goating all over the Rays last night. I love Tyler Gasno, by the way. I think Tyler Gasno is great. He just didn't play well last night. He didn't pitch well. But Mookie Betts. Star, star, star. That's why you cut that check. It was a good night for the Dodgers last night. I'm a fan of winning. I'm a fan of greatness with the exception of 123 in purple and gold. So outside of that, I told y'all the GOAT was going to show up last night, and he did. And by the way, Chicago is the greatest place ever in the summertime and the wintertime not so much because it's too cold. Too Dude, cold, you, baby. You totally wrote congratulations, Dodgers, on advancing. Like, you are such a Dodgers what? fan. You totally tweeted that from 1090. What you talking about? Now, all of a sudden, like, Clayton Kershaw's the GOAT. Mookie Betts a star. I told you guys Dodgers would show up. What the hell was this during the Padres series? You were all on board on Padres. 
clowning the Dodgers, saying that the Padres could beat them, that this ain't no big deal. You all all year not worried about the Dodgers. Now all of a sudden they're the goat. They're the best team. Mookie Betts, best player, superstar. Where did this homerism from the Dodgers come from? So if we go back and think, if we go back and look at the tape, uh, I've always had high regard for Clayton Kershaw. But even with that, I thought that the Padres could have beaten the Dodgers. It just didn't happen. You, you, I, I have vivid and Scott back me up here because I know I'm not freaking tripping. I, I, I remember specifically when oh. I said in the last regular season series that they played, this is a measuring stick to the Dodgers. And your thing was, don't worry about this. We all know what the Dodgers do in the playoffs. They choke. You kept saying that in the regular season. I did say that. Yeah. So now all of a sudden they don't choke. Now all of a sudden Clint Kershaw is the goat. Now all of a sudden Mookie Betts superstar. No, did you? Okay, let me let me break a little something down. I'm not trying to start all hostile with you. I just I'm trying to get where actually I want you to be hostile. I love I love hostility. Yeah, I love I was thriving it. I was trying to be hostile. You are you are intentionally bringing up hostility. To get this show kicked off today, you are oh, being hostile. Yes, uh, uh, Chris okay. Rose's MLB Network's intentional talk, intentional hostility. Then fine, let's lean into it. Okay. All I'm saying is, like, let's be fair to the audience here. How can you just be like their their history is choking? Kershaw chokes, they're chokers, and all of a sudden he's a goat. I told y'all he'd show up. Like, wh- how does that make sense, Ronner? What do you have to say to this this accusation that you were were pro Padre? You, True. You, well, you were making it. You, no, you no, were no. you were a Padre believer, or at True. least okay. And and now you've gone from I think the Padres could beat the Dodgers. True. To now, Kershaw's the goat. The Dodgers are are great. You're loving watching the Dodgers. I mean, you you've become a Dodger fan from the time the Dodgers beat the Padres. Alex is accusing you now. Mm-hmm. Of of really changing your allegiance from Padres to Dodgers. That's that's the accusation I'm hearing. Now let me break this down one more time. Okay, mm-hmm. never once said that about now rooting for the Dodgers. What I said was the Dodgers were chokers. I still believe the Dodgers are chokers. I've always said Clayton Kershaw is the greatest pitcher of all time. I've said that last series. I said that now. I said that when they played the Padres. Never heard you say that before. I, I I said it when they played the Padres. We're gonna need people to back you up on that one. Oh, uh, oh Scott, do you remember him? Like that's one of the things that I you would remember. I don't remember Browner saying that Clayton Kershaw is the greatest pitcher of all time. And just even if he did, not that I'm like you talk about hostility. Not that I want to sit here and have a greatest of all me time neither. pitcher no, argument. Neither. But but even that seems that seems as as almost as weird as as. Carson, Carson Wentz. Wentz is a is a top five quarterback in the NFL right now. I mean, Clayton Kershaw is a great p- pitcher. Clayton Kershaw has got a Hall of Fame regular season career, mm-hmm. and Clayton Kershaw clearly has struggled statistically mm-hmm. in the postseason. So he's the greatest pitcher of all time. He hasn't struggled this postseason. Look at the games. Look at the games. Two and zero. Oh, I'm I, saying I, is- correction. Three and zero oh after last night. I never them. accused you, by the way, of rooting for the Dodgers. I think your rhetoric on the Dodgers is changing to fit your perception of this particular series when you were saying other things. That's why I was confused. I don't care if you root for the Dodgers or not. I don't. My, my, and my only accusation that I actually did today was that you were the one that sent out the tweet from Mightier 1090 congratulating the Dodgers after beating the Padres. And I believe that your change of rhetoric has reinforced my position on that stance. I will, I will again... Restate this for the people in the back who didn't hear. <laughs> I cannot confirm I'm in the nor, back. I cannot confirm nor deny anything about that in regards to that tweet that was posted. I don't know anything about that. And the things that I do know about that, I don't know about that. Did you guys okay? find it fishy? By the way, we weren't supposed to start here, but I don't care. We don't have a plan ever. Uh, do you guys find it fishy that 1090 hasn't sent a congratulatory tweet, congratulatory tweet after they won the NLCS? Like it was only like a double stamp against the Padres. That's the way I took it now. So now I'm taking it as a personal attack to the Padres because 1090 has not tweeted anything about the Dodgers or the Lakers since it was hmm. specifically a tweet congratulating the Dodgers well, after they beat the first Padres. Of all, the the ambulance the ambulance came in so hard and loud. It's difficult to do anything after that. Not saying that I, again. Wrote the tweet. I'm just saying. 
whomever did, okay? The <laughs> ambulance came in so hard and loud, you really don't want to deal with that. So you would rather not do it. So mm. it's smarter to not but do no. it and not continue down that well, path let me, because let me you don't want the question. ambulance crashing into your living room. But let me ask you a question. Let, let me let me just ask you a question here. Browner, you're from Chicago, okay? Absolutely. You got two of everything in Chicago for the most part, okay? It's beautiful. So, so let me ask you this. You got the White Sox and you got the Cubs. Yes. Who are you a fan of? I love them both. That's not how it works. Okay. How, how, you let, gonna, how can you tell me how to be a fan? Let we me ask you. Always works. tell me. You always tell me. You always give me tr grief for who the teams I root for. What do you mean? How can I tell you how to be a fan? How can you pick two teams that's literally not being a fan? That's you choosing two sides, like Dodgers right, me, and Padres. Right. Let me ask you a question. If you're from New York, okay, are you a Yankee fan or a Mets fan? Are you a Jets fan or a Giants fan? Are you a Rangers fan or an Islanders fan? Are you a Knicks Mets fan or, or are you a Nets fan? I mean, LA, you, when you, when, NYFC Red Bulls. Right. So like when you're Nobody when you're that. when you're from the Bay Area, <laughs> when you're from the Bay Area, you you're you're not a Niners fan and a Raiders fan. You're either a Niners fan or a Raiders fan. You're either a Giants fan or you're a, a an A's fan. You know, it depends on which side of the bay you're from. So what I'm trying to figure out is this. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you find the Dodgers, this Dodger team right now, think about all the guys on the team. You got Dave Roberts leading things off, who's a San Diego native, a former Padre, a guy we all know, a guy we all like, right? I think a guy I cheer for. I'm rooting for Dave Roberts right now. Oh, you're going to say that. Oh, well, don't say that. Alex well, is going to call you some kind of weird hostility word. Listen, if, 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 Rooting for Dave Roberts is San Diego sports blasphemy. Then I guess I'm committing that because I'm uh -oh. rooting for Dave Roberts. Okay? Uh oh, but let me uh -oh. ask wait you for, this. Wait, wait for the, wait for the Alex tweet. But let me ask you this question: This particular Dodger team, would you call them likable or unlikable? No, they're listen. The Dodgers are the rich guy. They're the rich person. They got the nice car. They got the nice house. Their wife's a trophy wife. They don't even take care of their kids. A nanny does. They send them off to private school. That's this Dodger team. But that doesn't mean Mookie Betts ain't great. It doesn't mean Clayton Kershaw ain't the GOAT. Again, I'm backing those two people. I spoke on behalf of those two people. Once and for all, y'all know I, I respect the brothers. Any brother that do well on the stage, I respect that man in a sport like baseball. So don't even get me started on that. So shout out to Mookie Betts, World Series MVP. I'm calling it right now. All right. So Alex, I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. okay, you're a Padre fan. When you grew up in Oxnard, yeah. were you Next not? Dodgers. Were, were, were you a Dodger fan as a kid at all? No, my dad was a huge, huge, huge Dodger fan. Like the big, like, like when he passed, we put a Dodger hat in his casket. Like that's how big of a Dodger fan he was. But it was to the point where it was annoying and shoved down my throat that I went mm -hmm. the opposite way. I was so like, you know what? I like the Yankees. That's what I okay, think. Okay. But wow. so, did, so, so did you become a Padres fan? Listen, let's just put it out on the table. Did you become a Padres fan when you got to San Diego State? Or did yeah. you become a Pod? Oh, okay. You a Yankees fan. You the What's worst that? of the worst. You a Yankee Laker fan? Oh, no way. What? What? You are you a Yankee fan and a Laker fan at your roots? Next, you're gonna tell me you root for the Cowboys. How about understand. the Cowboys? I've been I've been riding the Padre wagon this entire time. What are you talking about? Man, listen, just because you ride the when wagon, have I ever brought up Yankee fan? You just did. I asked. I know. Him, I said I as a him. child, I okay. told my dad because he hated them so much that I just I'm that I was that kid, right? Yeah. I was the kid that I had to go against the dad. So, so when I was a kid, when I was a little kid, I grew up in New York, and my father actually was a Mets fan, and and my grandfather, my mother's father, he was a Yankees fan, and I remember being a little kid, and I saw Reggie Jackson hit these home runs, become Mister October. They had a candy bar called the Reggie bar. <laughs> I had a Yankees jacket, white jacket with Yankees across the, the front. I was a full-blown Yankee fan as a little kid. Okay. Um, the reason I'm asking you guys all of this is I, I want to get back to the question. Is this Dodger team that we saw last night, are they unlikable? Yes. Or are okay, 
you're saying that as a Padre fan, right? I'm saying that as I think a Yankee fan. I would say that <laughs> as as everyone would say, not a Dodger fan. As everyone that's not a Dodger fan, I think would answer that question as no, they are not likable. What is unlikable about the Dodgers? Max besides, Muncy. Besides, besides, if you're, listen, you're a Padre <laughs> fan this afternoon, you're tuning in, okay? And you're going, what are you saying, Kaplan? What are you saying here? Here's what I'm really trying to say before I, uh, here's what I'm trying to say. I have, I have this right here. I have my Charger Hater Club card, okay? I have anger towards the Chargers, okay? Um, I had anger towards the Dodgers when Adrian Gonzalez would show up wearing a Dodger uniform and play at Petco Park and have the whole place cheering. That, that would bother me, okay? By the way, Adrian Gonzalez, you see him on Twitter? Like, let's go, let's go, Dodgers. I mean, Adrian Gonzalez is a Dodger now. He's not a Padre anymore. He's a Dodger now. He he ended his career with the Dodgers. And if and if you really define Adrian Gonzalez's career when it's all said and done, he's a Dodger more than he is a Padre now. Really? At least, at least that's what it looks like on social media. So it you looks like I'm, Mario Lopez into that too, and LeBron James into that as well. So yeah, so so LeBron is now a Dodger fan, or or let me rephrase it. He's the way I see it, he's a supporter of the Dodgers. Because they're in the World Series, and his team, the Lakers, just won the the, the the World Championship. So he's in L.A. He's going to be in L.A. He's got his roots in Cleveland, so he can love the Indians. He can love the Browns, but he can go to Rams games and support the Rams, and he can follow the Dodgers and tweet about the Dodgers and follow the Dodgers and become a fan of the team because he's there in town. What I'm asking you guys about likability is when I watch these guys, the Dodgers, you know what? I don't have anger or dislike or hatred for Mookie Betts. In fact, I very much like Mookie Betts. I think he's a great player. Great player. I think he's lived up to the hype. I like Mookie Betts. Cody Bellinger, you know, from the, the forearm bump to now the kid and play kick when you hit another home run to missing a ball that hits you right in the glove to making a, a home run stealing catch. I don't hate Cody Bellinger. In fact, I kind of like the guy. I think when I look at him, I see a guy who's, you know, just, I think of kids I saw playing travel ball that are trying to grind their way into the major leagues, or some guys were really exceptional and they became first round draft choices. I just look at him and I go, he kind of looks like the kid that would have been playing ball in my neighborhood with my kid. I don't find the Dodgers if I'm just being honest. I mean, Homerism is you hate them. But if I'm just being honest, I kind of find these guys to be interesting and not, I don't have this great hatred for I them. can explain to you the other side in a non, in a Homer way after the break. I'll okay. Tell you. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere because the Dodgers won game one last night. It's where we're starting. Stick around. All right. Hey, if you're just getting with us here on a Wednesday afternoon, it's Kaplan and crew. We got started this afternoon for those of you that are with us on podcast. And let's just say you're just now tuning into our YouTube show and you're catching us not from the very beginning, but you're catching us right where we're at, which is right now. Uh, we were having this conversation about are the Dodgers likable or unlikable, you know, and if you're a Padre fan, here's what I see on social media, the hatred, the venom, you know, it's like they're the rival. They are, from a Padre fan perspective, the Dodgers are the team you're chasing. They've got eight straight division titles. They've got championships in their trophy cases. They've got legends lined throughout their organization, et cetera. And if you're a Padre fan, you've always been little San Diego brother, just a couple hours south Nobody respects you. Nobody believes in you. You'll never be able to keep up financially, et cetera, okay? But when I watch the Dodgers play and I see Dave Roberts, may maybe if Dave Roberts wasn't the manager, I'd feel differently about it. I'm not really sure. But I see Dave Roberts. I see Mookie Betts. I see Bellinger. I see Seager, Turner, Muncie. I look at these guys and... I don't find them, like, I don't have this hatred. This right here, Charger Hater Club card, Dean Spanos. 
He'll always be the owner of the Chargers. I got hatred in my heart for the guy, right? You know, John Spanos doesn't deserve to have the job that he has and does it poorly. I'll have that hatred. A.G. Spanos, that guy doesn't talk. That guy, and he's like the, the supposed to be the face of the franchise. I, I got the, the the San Diego hatred for that dude. They up and left us. They they yanked the heart out of our sports community. I got that hatred, you know what I'm saying? But for the Dodgers, I had the rivalry Padres-Dodgers hatred, but the Dodgers are there. I love a good story. Clayton Kershaw winning last night when everybody expected him to choke is an interesting story. Uh, Mookie Betts stealing bases, hitting home runs, uh, making great plays. Interesting story. Uh, Bellinger hitting his home run and then kid and play kicking everybody as a celebration rather than taking the chance with his shoulder, I think is interesting. Explain to me, Alex, your, your Padre lover, Dodger hater. Explain why these Dodgers, from your perspective, for my 20 year old son, my 20 year old son hates him, hates yeah. them all, you know? And I go, but Max Muncy's a guy who's had to grind his way to where he's at. He I was released by the Oakland A's. Look what the career he's had. Justin Turner was a guy who had been punted on by other organizations. He's the heart and soul of their team. Young up and coming guys that they've, they've developed through their farm system combined with superstars that, yeah, they can afford to go out and pay, but Hey, that's not a Padre excuse anymore. Padres paid $30 million. They took a guy from the Dodgers. So explain to me so I understand your perspective. I'm trying to understand my son's perspective. Give me the yeah. Padre hate towards Well, it's not even Dodgers. that, dude. It's not even okay. that because I'm putting it into the most simple I'm putting it to you as a sports fan and I know JB will back me up on this. Like it's it's watching your rival be better than you and succeed. It's very simple. It's not the fact that it's the Dodgers. Did you love it when the Giants were winning with your manager too? No, you hated it. It's the same thing when, why do you think Browner has so much love in his heart when the Vikings are terrible? For the same reason, he yeah. has so much love in his heart when Aaron Rodgers gets humiliated. The yeah. same thing. You want to watch the teams that you are your rivals in your division fail. It's that simple. It's not, it has nothing to do that it's the Dodgers. It would be the same thing if it was the Giants, if it was the Diamondbacks, if it was the Rockies. Now, it's amplified because it is like this new rivalry that, that we want to be a part of, right? So that you go, you bring up the little brother thing. I, it's, it's so much more than that. It's like it's the fact that there is a, a personal beef there, but at the end of the day, what it really is, it's just being a sports fan. You don't want to see your rival win a championship. Do you think? How do you think Clippers felt when the Lakers won? When it was supposed to be their year? This, this was like the, their best shot of of winning, and yet the Lakers hosted the tro hoisted the trophy. It's the same thing. You don't want to see that. It's like your nightmare as a sports fan. Well, all right, let me ask you. Okay, hold on a second, though. Hold on. When Bruce Bochy was winning World Series titles for the San Francisco Giants, were you rooting against him? I wasn't. I, I, I would not an ounce of me was rooting for the Giants at all. Not okay. a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. Different, different feeling here. Can you, yeah, because you. Here's the difference between you and the majority of fans. Yeah, you have ahead. personal relationships with Dave Roberts and you had personal relationships with Bruce Bochy. Like, so I see where you particularly are coming from individually. When you remove yourself and you just see a manager and you see a guy that, that should have maybe been your manager and you see him going out and winning, are you happy for the guy? Are you pissed well, at your organization? Well, okay. Okay. Well, hold on. So in the case of Bruce Bochy, as an example, Bruce Bochy was kicked out the door. Right. And so was Dave Bochy. Roberts. Oh, okay. So again, so here it goes. So for Bruce Bochy, who had been kicked out by the Padre organization, I found myself rooting for Bruce Bochy to win, to make a point. That, that the point's Padre been made. So up. now it's, that point's okay. been made. Like it's okay. more of a, to me, and mm -hmm. I'm only speaking for me. I'm not speaking. Like I can't, I don't know. But to me, it's more of a kick in the nuts. When not only did your rival win it, but they won it with the guy that was in your clubhouse for however many freaking years. Okay. All right. Let me, let me keep going then. You see, cause I think you might be right that my, my closeness, if you will, yeah. because of the business that we're in. Yeah. Jade's my fandom. That's why it's difficult for me to like, because you guys know I, and when I say like my friends, I'm telling you like my very close, close friends that I speak to on a text daily basis. 
are massive Dodger fans. And it's difficult for me sometimes to trash Dave Roberts because I like the guy. Like from the BP days, I was his freaking intern. Like I, I like the guy. Like I, he may not know me if he sees me, but we've spoken a million times. So for you that actually has a personal in-face relationship, I can I see where you're coming from, but I don't think we speak for anywhere near the majority of people. No, 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 no. We don't. That's my whole point. Is it is that when I ask the question, are the Dodgers likable or unlikable? I think about my man Mike Hernandez. You know, who's like the number one Padre fan that I know who lives and dies with the Padres like the and number just, one overreactor of all time. Right. But that, but that's, your, that's the whole point mm -hmm. about being a great fan, you know, is that it's killing a guy like that, that the Dodgers are actually not just in the world series, but that the Dodgers won game one and that Kershaw went out and actually performed in game one. It's crushing my man, Mike Hernandez. It's crushing other Padre fans who want the Dodgers to fail. It's like the way Laker fans celebrated the Clippers being ousted in the NBA playoffs and never even getting a shot at the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. Laker fans were happy at Clipper fans' failures. Padres fans want Dodgers and Dodger fans to feel that failure. I have a slightly different uh, uh, DNA it's true. I mean, people say, hey, you weren't born in San Diego. Pfft, okay, I wasn't. I've been, been in San Diego 20 years. I rooted for Bruce Bochy and the San Francisco Giants to make their point. I rooted for Junior Seau when he left and he went to Miami. I, I wanted to see Junior Seau do well. When he went to, to New England, even though they were the Patriots, I wanted to see Junior Seau do you well. You didn't want him to do well when they played the Chargers that year. Correct. I did right. not. But when and they right. weren't playing the Chargers, and Junior Seau and the and the 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 Patriots went to the Super Bowl. I was rooting for Junior Seau and the Patriots to win the Super Bowl. Okay, when Drew Brees left the Chargers, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised to hear me talk about this. I've been a Brees fan and a Saints fan since the day Brees left. I've I've rooted for him to win every game he's ever played against the Chargers, even when they were in San Diego. I rooted for him. So I guess my whole point is this. When I watch the Dodgers right now, I'm rooting for Dave Roberts. I like Mookie Betts. I like Bellinger. I like the story of guys like Seager, who was down a year ago, but who's made a massive comeback. I like the stories of guys who grind like, like Turner and Muncie. And by the way, I like guys who talk a lot of smack too. And that is Muncie. I don't find the Dodgers to be as hateable as everybody else finds them to be. And actually, I got to say, and this is another part of it. I've loved this baseball season more than any baseball season I can ever remember. I'm serious. I love the 60 games. I love the DH. Um, I love the no nights off, even though during the World Series, there's a night off here and there. I love this baseball season. And so it could be Tampa and Chicago right now. And I think I'd be just as into this World Series because I've this has been my favorite baseball season that I can remember. That's what I've been trying to say. What do you think of that, Browner? Oh, I'm still on the show. Okay. So well, you've just been sitting there, man. Winning, Not like you. Winning breeds jealousy. Period. Point blank. End of story. If you work hard at something, you will have confidence. And then if you win at what you worked hard at, some people will see that as arrogance. But that's just working hard. That leads to winning. Anybody who hates the you, you don't find them to be likable. You don't find them to be likable because of the outside things, because they're the Los Angeles Dodgers. No one's equating Mac, Max, Max Muncy's road to success with the Dodgers because they don't see Max Muncy as that. Max Muncy is a member of the Dodgers. If Max Muncy got on the Padres, then people would feel differently about him. You root against the people who don't wear your uniform. That's basically what all this boils down to. People don't like the pod, the uh, Dodgers from San Diego because they've been winning and they're your rival. San Diego doesn't like LA generally. That's most of the problem with the Chargers moving to Los Angeles. It, it's all rooted in geographical uh, 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 dominance. And so far, the, the Dodgers are doing better than the Padres. That's all it boils down to. Let me ask you this. Are you guys rooting for Manny Margot? Are you rooting for Hunter Renfro? Like I see Hunter Renfro and I go, oh my God, Hunter Renfro is the cleanup hitter 
of the Tampa Bay Rays in the freaking World Series. Uh, he's the number four hitter on their team up against Clayton Kershaw. Wait a second. He strikes out on a, this is early in the game, on a really, really, really bad strikeout. And because, I mean, the ball was down in the dirt and he went swinging and, and the umpire at home called him out, even though he tried to check his swing. And then after Hunter Renfro comes up, Manny Margot comes up and I go, this is hard to believe, right? I mean, the, the, the Tampa Bay Rays are in the World Series and their four, five hitters are two guys that a year ago were on the Padres. Are you rooting for those two guys? But you also know that they're not known for their hitting in Tampa Bay. They're known for their pitching. So let's not. Yes, Still, you're, they're, the, they're not. They're not eight and nine. They're true. four and five. But that's a isn't that a bad sign for the isn't that a bad sign for the Rays? These are guys yep. the Pirates got rid of, and there <laughs> are four or five hitters over there. Did you hard, see my tweet last night? It's so hard to believe, right? Yeah. What's your tweet, Alex? That's what I. That's my answer. Oh, the Padres. The Padres. <laughs> Thank you, Joe Joe Rigby, for putting that on the chat yesterday, inspiring me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's cool. I mean, it's it, you know what's cool about it? It's that they're not doing it against the Padres because we, we're so used to that, right? Where old Padres go out, <clears throat> Jed Jerko, Matt Kemp, Adrian Gonzalez, that they go out and then come back and crush the freaking Padres. So it's nice that they're not doing it. But, yeah, when Hunter Renfro and Manny Margot are your you know, four and whatever hitter, not really a great sign for you. I don't really no, know how I, you won 40 games. It's but it's still hard to believe, right? I mean, these two guys were they were castoffs from the Padres. I mean, Hunter Renfro was hitting monster bomb home runs and for that alone I didn't want him to be traded. But, you know, they 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 moved him out and they moved out Margot who was who had been 4 years ago was advertised as the future of the franchise. He's going to be the guy in center field. I was at the All-Star game the futures game in San Diego and Margot made a play where he robbed somebody of a home run over the center field wall. And you're like, that's the future of the Padres right there. And now they are no longer. And they are two guys in the primes of their career, you would think. And they're in the world series, which the Padres didn't get to the, the Rays got to the world series and they're in the middle of, of the lineup, which is kind of hard to believe, but I'm, I was rooting for those guys. This is also a problem why when I look at the people tell me about the farm system and people keep telling me about, oh, uh, Mackenzie Gore and all these other people. If they don't show you them, then there's a problem because they did have no problem showing you Manny Margot and he flamed out. So get people who can actually play proven baseball. Sign Trevor Bauer. Mm -hmm. Here right, you go, listen. Scott. I did what you love what you love when I do. Yeah, go ahead. The Dodgers are, are the 2020 Dodgers, a likable team now on site. Okay. Are the 2020 Dodgers a likable team? Alex has posted it on sided for I those. No. Okay. For those of you that are, uh, our longtime listeners, you know, I've been working on this thing for three years and I'll just take 30 seconds and just say, Hey, do me this favor. Download the app, the sided debates mobile app. And all you gotta do is go to the app store. Or if you are an Android user, cause I know there's some Androiders out there. You can, you know, download it in the Google play store as well. It's completely free. The end all be all on this app is Alex asks a question, are the 2020 Dodgers likable? And if you win that debate, because at the end of it, meaning the clock is going to strike zero and somebody's there's going to be a winning side and there's going to be a losing side. And whoever has the most likes on the winning side, that person wins the debate and you move up the leaderboard. And if you can beat our longtime listener, Bernard Thompson, you'll win the gift card. It just goes Places one through 10 all get Amazon gift cards on Sunday night when the game closes. So listen, we're building it. It's all a local company here in San Diego. It's all local angel investors. It's all locally based. I mean, everybody who works here is in San Diego. So do that. Who said Download Dodgers? At, who said Dodgers in five last night? Was that you, JB? Yep. Yeah, I, I think Dodgers in five sounds right. I said Dodgers begrudgingly. Because I think they're just a better team, you know. But I could admit that the Dodgers in five sounds about right. If Kershaw's going to pitch well, I mean, their Rays are screwed. I had Dodgers in seven because I was hoping to see a game seven because both the ALCS and the NLCS were awesome with game yeah. seven. Yeah. But I think that, like in basketball, you would look at the Lakers beating up on the Heat in game one and go, well, I thought this was going to be a six or seven game series, but. The Lakers just look so dominant, they're going to crush them. But each game is different. Things happen along the way. 
Um, I feel like the same way you guys do, which is after watching the Dodgers last night, they might sweep them four straight. But then the next part of me is like, nah, the Rays have gotten here. All I hear about is they're great pitching. They're awesome bullpen. Um, if they, they didn't come tonight with Blake Snell on the mound, then they're really screwed. They yeah. have to win one to nothing, three to four. If it gets past five runs, the Rays are not going to win the game. Although they did have that inning where the guy they were they were making a comeback there, and that guy um, hit the comeback, and the pitcher caught it and threw a double play that bailed him out because that inning looked like it was going to have a little bit of a snowball effect. But I tend to agree with Browner on that. Like a low scoring game is going to favor the Rays. The Dodgers start blasting home runs again. I mean, we've seen it. No one stops them if they're able to. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, I'll take a second here to just thank Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Cork, I want to thank you. Uh, it's been 18, 17 years that Corky has been with this show. And through um, lots of different people, and I, when I say people, I mean like owners of radio stations, sales representatives, different formats going from traditional radio to digital broadcasting, then adding traditional radio back to digital broadcasting. Uh, there's been one guy, well, two guys really, Corky and Gary Cooper, but Corky from the very beginning, without that first commitment, who knows what we might've been doing and who knows how everybody's lives would be different now. So thank you, Corky. We appreciate you always. 1-800-901-1102. Hank Bauer talks about how Corky has come out to his house in Tierra Santa because he's got all kinds of critters going on out there and taking care of that. My Corky's guy was here yesterday and I was telling him about this rat slash mouse issue I think I was having. And so he was like, well, there are no rats in any of these traps, but I'll start moving them to other places. It's just great to have that relationship and communication. So look, Ants, spiders, termites, mice, rats, big furry animals. You need them gone. Corky's makes it happen. 1-800-901-1102 for Corky's. I was walking the pup yesterday and I saw a Corky's van <laughs> and, I, and I crossed the street right in front of it. And I gave the guy a thumbs up like, yeah, Corky's. And he looked at me like, what? Like, yeah, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, like you don't know who I am. What the? Yeah. But anyways, good job, man. <laughs> Why didn't you say to him, call 1 800 901 1102? What if he doesn't dude? fire back with the corkies? Then yeah, see. Yeah, what if, yeah. All now everybody knows that. Guy walking his dog yelling phone numbers at people through a face no. mask. No, right, no, dude. The guy who works at corkies knows the number. It would have been cool if you would have slowed it down, too. If you been, like, yo, what's up, man? What's up? Call 1 800 901. And then he'd roll down his window and he'd gone, one one oh two, and then the whole block goes corkies. People from their apartments and stuff. Yeah. That's great a great commercial. TV commercial. That is a great TV commercial. Oh, yeah. Right, Browner? That's that's fantastic. That is a great idea on the move, Alex. You might want to write this one down and email it to Corky. Yeah. Seriously, like you're you're walking your dog across the street, you know, and you're just whistling do 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 do, and then all of a sudden a Corky's van pulls up, just ironically and just just coincidentally just pulls up at that red light and you point over to him and you're like, yo, what's up Corky's guy? What's going on, man? <laughs> and then you, you start singing it out loud. Right. And then one, and he rolls down his window and he sings it with you one, one, Oh two. And then everybody stops what they're doing, walking their dogs, talking on their phones, eating lunch on the street, whatever. Everybody stops and goes Corky's. That's yeah, a great idea. A good one. It's, I mean, listen, any commercial is going to be better than that one plumbing commercial where the whole staff is just walking oh in motion towards Anderson the commercial. Plumbing? Oh, <laughs> Anderson, call us. We can help you. Yeah, hey, how about a... how about the white glove guys? Are those the worst commercials of all time? I mean, very effective. Those are effective, though. No, effective. That, listen, that Anderson commercial where the whole staff, that's bad. That's pretty bad. I That's mm. pretty bad. The white glove guys commercials are annoying. I mean, but but effective. So works. All right, stick around. We got a great show coming up today. Burt Grossman and all of his craziness coming up. Stay with us. Great friends. What's up on Wednesday afternoon? Scott Kaplan and crew and crew. Mi hermano numero uno grande Alejandro Padilla en la casa. Present. There you go. And Big Brown himself. Street cred, Chicago in the house, Big Brown. Hey, hey, what's popping? Yeah. So um, I want to talk about the World Series again, and I want to just say I thought it was really funny when Cody Bellinger hit that home run and he comes home and you're thinking to yourself, what's he going to do? Is he going to high-five people? Is he going to elbow people? Is he going to throw out a forearm shiver? No, he's a right-footed kicker, 
And everybody got a high five. Well, I guess you'd call it a low five. A low foot. I guess. A low five. It's not a high five. It's a, it's a low five. And so Bellinger hits his home run, comes home. And for me, I hear a kid in play in my head. You guys know the song? Do, 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 do. Mm. That's, that's, that's the way I hear it. I don't think anybody was driving with you there. No? Brown or no? Like, sounded no. Like, like you were like doing some jazz number. Yeah, I did make that a little too jazzy. Try yeah. it again. Try it again. Yeah. Yeah. Threw me off. Yeah. Uh, huh. uh. No? Watching you physically try to find the rhythm and then get <laughs> out. His, his, face, his face was. Great. I just, I just wish I could remember. What's, what's the name of the song? A Kid and Play had the video where the two of them are doing these dance moves, right? They're doing these dance moves, and then they kick one another. It's like, it's like back up, then kick. That came from exactly. the movie House Party. That wasn't right. necessarily from a song that they did. No, it, no, but they did a video, dude. They did a video, a kid and play video. Kid had the high top fade, you know, and play kind of had that DJ Jazzy Jeff look going, you know, just like, you know, one guy had a, a look and the other guy didn't have a look so much. And they had a video. And in the video, they did the kick with each other. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, I know the, I don't know the song specifically. It, it may have been in a video, but it originated in the movie. And then it was probably carried over to this video. I was never really a big kid and play fan. I just oh, felt that's like too bad. House Party was awesome. That's just too bad because... House, uh, House Party was the best movie for a, a kid in, in that age range, man. House Party was dope. Yeah. I'm going to find it. Kid and play... Uh, let's see. Kid and play... Oh, is it kicks... Oh, let's see here. Uh, the kid and play... House Party, kid and play... Roll them with kid and play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll them with kid and play. Sing it. Yeah, I'm um, watching it now. Oh, I, oh, I, yeah. A. yeah. Oh, I, oh, I, A. oh, I, oh, I, A. oh, 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 kid and play now. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh. Anybody else getting that? No? No, not even a little. Yeah, there it is. See, Grande's got it up on the screen. For those of you yeah. that are watching on YouTube. I'm also hearing it. Well, that was me. I was playing it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you that are watching on YouTube, Alex just put it up on the screen. Facebookers, you too. For those of you listening on radio or any of the audio podcast pa podcast platforms, like it's just different now. Like we're literally sitting in front. I got, I'm sitting in front of three different computer monitors. One is like stuff that I'm talking about, or I, I got to research and look. One of them is actually a camera shooting video. And one of them is a, ca a computer that's so old that I can't even believe it still works, but I'm just, I'm getting anything I can, can get out of it, you know? And then there's this, the phone. So I got like four devices all around me trying to give me some info on the fly. You could probably hear me banging away on my keyboard too, you know? <laughs> Seriously, I hit the keyboard so hard. Uh, so Bellinger hits his home run, and he pulls the kid and play move. I thought that was very funny. Like I thought that was hilarious. Lovable. The, thing. I like. I thought it was likable. Hmm, you weren't the only one. King James, LeBron. LeBron is apparently taking time away from carrying around the NBA championship trophy through a club in Las Vegas, and LeBron was like doing live tweeting last night of the Dodgers. And uh, so when LeBron sees the, the leg kick, he had a, a just go back to the other screen. He says, ha 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 leg tap celebrations for him. That's how he laughed. Yeah. Ha 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 ha. Browder, Browder, this, no wonder you hate LeBron. Cause he's a Cowboys fan, man. He's, he's a, he's he a, what, well, I thought he was a Yankees fan too. And an Indians fan and a Dodgers fan. He changes teams more than he changes underwear. At one point, he was a Browns fan. He's an Ohio State fan. He he's such a front runner. I'm surprised he don't tear his hamstrings. <laughs> is that cool? That's a whole other question too. Is it cool for a a professional athlete like a star of his, athlete of his magnitude of his magnitude to to just support the team of the city that he's in? Like I don't remember him being a Miami Marlins fan, but you know, it would it be cool if or hey, a Dolphins fan, by the way. Yeah. But well, you just but you used and then when he was uh, when he was in L.A. and the Cowboys played at the Coliseum, he went to support the Cowboys. He didn't go to support the Rams. Didn't he get a lot of flack for that? I remember some people, a lot of people being people like, were, "Oh, what is he doing?" Yeah, we were still on 1090, and we had a Saturday show. We did a whole segment on should LeBron root for the Rams or the Cowboys. Like, are you going to be a home a homeboy now, or are you going to root for your team? So okay, so you're you're calling LeBron a front runner. So when LeBron's in Miami. The Dolphins aren't any good. The Heat 
uh, or excuse me, the Marlins aren't any good. You know, thanks. He was on the heat. Thank you. <laughs> they were pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but the Marlins, I don't recall them being any good. No. Dolphins either. He was a Yankees fan when he was in Miami. And I think, mm-hmm. so, I think I, I could be getting it wrong. He was but a Browns I'm, fan he, when he was in Miami he, too. He grew up a Yankees fan and Cowboys fan. That's the way I remember. Ugh. And his baseball allegiance is, has switched, but it didn't switch when he was in Miami because they were so bad. He was like, you know what? I'm a Yankees fan. All right, so so is is it worth Browner ripping LeBron more because now LeBron plays in L.A., lives in L.A., and isn't going anywhere? It's not like LeBron is just kind of in L.A. now, and when his career is over, he's going to disappear back home, and you're never going to yeah, hear from him. He again. just built his daughter a house bigger than ours. So. Right. He's, Pretty much. He's, in he's the backyard now, of his house. Yeah. Right. LeBron lives in L.A. now, and LeBron will live in L.A. LeBron will be grounded in L.A., until LeBron decides that he needs to have residency in some other state because he's paying too much taxes and he decides to move to Florida next door to Shaq and, and Tiger. But LeBron like is clearly supporting the Dodgers. Yes. He's, he's saying, I'm a champion. I'm with the Lakers. The Dodgers are the next biggest organization in sports in LA. I want to send my love and send my support to these guys in the World Series. Problem? No problem. Of course it's a problem. <laughs> of course. What? Listen, man, you can't just be, you cannot just be jumping ship. But I guess I'm not shocked because that's what his followers do. Wherever he goes, they go. So one week they're yeah, cheering for weird, Miami. Huh? Yeah, one week they're cheering for Cleveland. Next week they're cheering for LA. Then two weeks after that, they're cheering for Cleveland again. So it's hard to keep track of who he's a fan of. He's got more jerseys in his closet than probably anybody in the league. Like okay. Kawhi? What you mean? Like Kawhi, when he when he goes to Padres games, he's a Padres fan. But then now that he's in LA, he's he's at front row of Dodger Dodger games. Well, let well, well for let let's be clear on something. Kawhi, yeah, because it's okay because it's Kawhi. That Kawhi, let's, just, let's just before you even say what you're going to say, let's be clear on something, right? All right, let's let's at least make it fair. Then how about this? How about like Antonio Gates? Antonio Gates is a Padres fan when he's at a Padres game, but when he's when he's at a Dodger game, he shows up in a Dodger uniform or a Dodger jersey. So it's okay. I mean, is it cool? Is it all right? I mean, is is, is Antonio Gates a, a sellout? So get the hell out. <laughs> hey, listen, this is a case by case basis, okay? <laughs> no, it's not. As far as Kawhi Leonard no. goes, that's a lot. <laughs> no, it's not a case, okay? It's Kawhi one Leonard, case, it's one case versus everybody else. Kawhi Leonard caught a lot of <laughs> flack from his teammates because he still lived in San Diego and had to drive up for clipper trips and practices. That's why he and that's why he's got the helicopter. He flew okay? up, yeah. So for y'all to be trying to bash Kawhi Leonard for making a business decision to put a clipper up, I'm thinking to put a Dodger jersey or hat on at the game, that's just him being respectful, polite, and professional. Don't try to throw him under the bus. Kawhi also, know Kawhi Kawhi also when, when he was in Toronto, Toronto. When he was in Toronto, Kawhi also supported the Blue Jays sitting front row. Again, Respecting <laughs> the individual company in which you're in business with. What? Are you, what what's He's that in business with the Blue Jays? He's when not you're in business the Raptors, with the Dodgers or the Padres? When you're listen, as a member of the Toronto Raptors, okay, you are tied to the Blue Jays. It is not a discussion to to build up Raptor fandom. If you bought tickets to the season tickets to the the Toronto Blue Jays, you were required to buy season tickets. To the Toronto Raptors, okay? That's a hand-in-hand glove business partnership, okay? But you got to know that to know that. That was I business. Know. I don't know that. I don't know. And I still don't even know it. That's um, business. I just told you. Well, I don't know if I buy it, but here's the thing. Um, what are you, Trump? That's because you said, I, I don't know. I love that exact when you bring Trump up. But what is that people, the thing that people always say about Trump? There's a tweet for everything. Like things that he says now, he tweeted the opposite in the past. That's literally what Browner is with Kawhi and LeBron. Kawhi does the same stuff Please and, not. and, well, and, me, and it's a he trashes lebron and Kawhi. it's a business decision okay let yeah. me ask you a question let me ask yeah. you a question okay oh, Kawhi Leonard played for the san antonio spurs for what almost 10 years yeah you ever see him in a cowboys jersey you ever see san him antonio in a cowboys far. San antonio's far yeah, but are, are san antonio and the cowboys tied together the way the lakers and the dodgers are tied together no. are the, are the who the cowboys tied to in cleveland man who the cowboys tied to in miami yeah, but but being a cowboy fan is an easy thing to become as a kid. I know when... Alex was a cowboy fan. Huh? Alex, Alex was a Cowboys fan. 
Oh, no, I couldn't wear Cowboys gear because they were gang affiliated where I came from. Shout uh, out. Cowboys, Raiders, and 49er gear was all banned in my school. And then they and then they said it was too uh, biased against them. So they just banned all professional gear at schools. Like mm-hmm. I grew up never wearing any team because I couldn't wear it to school. And my mom said, like, well, if you can't wear it to school, then you're not going to wear it at all. Hey, man, shout out whole... to growing up in gang-affiliated neighborhoods where you can't wear any type of apparel <laughs> or logo to school at all, ever. Ever, <laughs> dude. Like, ever. Like, we couldn't even wear a black hat. Like, you're like, no, you can't wear hats. Dude, yeah. the school colors had to be green when <laughs> I was in elementary My school. school color was green. Because they're, they're, it, no gangs at the time had taken up green. <laughs> so the school changed their complete color scheme to green, and you had to wear green uniforms because there were no gangs that wore green. I, think yeah. I grew up hating the Cowboys because of the local gang, just like the local Cholos just being idiots. So I was like, dude, you guys are so stupid. You're all wearing Cowboys, like Emmett Smith jerseys. Yeah. I just feel like, um, I guess my my biggest problem is, is we go back to this whole idea about who do you love? Who do you hate? Who do you find likable or unlikable? Who do you root for or not root for? This whole conversation, I I think for me, as I'm look, I'm looking back on it, as I'm listening to you guys, growing up as a kid in New York, I, I my dad was a Jets fan. He was a Joe Namath fan, so I started kind of with the Jets. I think I told you my grandfather was a Yankees fan, so I started with the Yankees. When I was little, probably about ten years old, we moved to Denver, and at the time, uh, my cousins had already moved to Denver, and they were fans of the Broncos. And everybody had an orange crush defense T-shirt, and I was a Lyle Alzado fan. I remember being about 10 or 11 years old and my mom took me to a shopping mall so I could get a, a an autograph and a picture with a Denver Bronco linebacker. You guys will never know this guy's name. His name is Randy Gratishar. So you're talking about like the, the early 80s, like 81-ish. I'm a little kid and my mom takes me to the mall to get my Denver Bronco jacket signed by Randy Gratishar. And then after we left Denver, where I was a huge Bronco fan from being a little kid, we moved down to South Florida. And in 1983, when the Dolphins draft Dan Marino, two years later, the Dolphins are in the Super Bowl. So, you know, your your dad takes you to a game. The one game I think I ever went to as a kid was a Dolphins-Jets Monday night football game at the old Orange Bowl, probably again, mid-80s, right? Didn't get home till like two in the morning. Um, and I just remember like it being so late at night and stuck in traffic. And we were just fans who who got tickets and we went to the game. We didn't buy them. I mean, somebody like gave them to us. Dolphins fan, Marino fan, you know, then after Marino was, was there with the Dolphins for so long, I also became a Pitt Panther fan because Marino had gone to Pitt. Then I find myself going to school there. I get to, to Pittsburgh. The Steelers are there. I become a Steeler fan. I, you know, I, I get to go to Steeler games. But the Pirates during the summer, I'd go to Pittsburgh Pirate games. I was a Pirate fan. All these years later, moved to San Diego and get deeply involved in the Padres, become a huge Padre fan. You know, then here we are. And this, this gets me to where we are right now. I guess I just don't have the anger and the hatred for the Dodgers the way I do for the Chargers. But I've, it's been, I've been holding it back for three segments. It's, it isn't. It's funny because in a certain way, in certain parts, like Alex was telling the story of what you couldn't wear at, at the school, which brought this story back to me. I almost got killed in high school. So my sophomore year in high school, the Bulls were playing the Sonics in the finals. My mom, unbeknowingly, went, which went shopping and bought this super sweet Seattle Super Sonics jacket. It was probably the coolest jacket I had ever like seen in my life, right? It was a starter jacket. It was dope. So she was like, hey, I bought you this jacket. Not really realizing she got the jacket on a discount because the Bulls were playing the Sonics so and nobody's going to buy Sonic material while they're in the finals against the Bulls. Me, I go, well, that's dope. I put the jacket on. I go to the store. Store's like three blocks from my house. Literally, these guys come out of nowhere, rip the jacket off of me, put a knife to my throat and say, oh, you a Sonics fan? I said, nah, man, my mom got me this jacket. These fools cut the jacket up, gave it back to me, zipped it up, and said, go back home. So I went back home in the jacket, like, completely sliced up. She thought somebody tried to kill me. I said, no, you they jacket. Did. gave me this Sounds jacket. Like you almost got me killed. Sounds <laughs> like somebody did. Maybe it was your mother who was trying to get you killed. Maybe. Is that Maybe. where? That would explain it, a lot. Is that where it was? That first instance of you wearing gear of not your teams, like because now you wear Warriors sweatshirts, so not some things never change. No, n- yeah, you know what? That that is 
that is the first time. Because after that, I faced death, and I was like, "Nah, I survived that. I could wear whatever I want." <laughs> yeah. Now you're just rocking that in and out <laughs> sweatshirt. Hey, yeah. AP, yeah. AP giving me grief about a Warriors sweatshirt. Pff, he ain't got no knife. He ain't got no <laughs> knife on him. He's crazy. He, he, he he's not a no stabber. With him. He's not a stabber. Hey, uh, uh, and those uh, dudes were stabber. Okay, I went to listen. Funniest part about that. I went to school with two of those dudes, by the way. I saw two of those dudes. Saw them on Monday. <laughs> hey, speaking of stabbers, you, speaking, of, speaking of stabbers real quick, did you guys see the story about Tommy Pham, how the San Diego Police Department still has no like leads on, on who stabbed Tommy Pham? And um, so for those of you watching, Alex is putting up a, a picture right now. On one side, you see Tommy Pham, his front side in a Padre uniform. On the other side is a picture of Tommy Pham's backside with his red pants and his white shirt and all the blood gushing out of the back of his of his shirt from you know his Pacers days or whatever the name of that place is down there. And um, yeah, and so Pacers they, International Gentlemen's Club. Don't oh, do that. Right. Well, I, I didn't have enough. I didn't have Pacers International Gentlemen's Club. I only had Pacers. I couldn't remember the International Gentlemen's Club part of it. And so the cops still don't have anybody in custody. They still don't have any suspects on the Tommy Pham stabbing. You know, and and it just it occurs to me. It's like, yeah, we don't really have any suspects because, you know, man, I, I'm not so sure the story as it was reported is exactly how it all went Here down. Here you go. Here so you it's go. Kind of just better that we don't have anybody in custody because maybe he wasn't quite just the innocent bystander that Kevin AC reported him to be. <laughs> so, so I'm telling y'all, that's I what you're going with. I told y'all how that happened, and I wasn't there. But I'm telling y'all that had some gang language involved, and that's why he got stabbed. Well, what right. do you think, Alex? I think he got stabbed in the back, and no one saw who stabbed him in the back because he didn't have eyes behind his back. How are you going to arrest someone you didn't see? Like, you really think Pacers International Showgirls Mausoleum Museum, whatever it's called, has like like nice security cameras up front? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. three people have been killed yeah. in that parking lot. Right. Yeah. So how do you prevent from getting shut down? You don't have security cameras and you you lose all liability. If you have security cameras, that means you have to have working tape. That means you have to have someone that knows how to work it. Dude, no cameras up front. Oh, we don't know. You know, oh, security guards, eyewitnesses, but nobody saw because you got stabbed in the back. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. Out, done. Wow, they got stabbed that many times, huh? Well, no, but that I, that was more of the American me and me, like the the movie American, the, 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 the little stab prison. He yeah, his stabber. That his got like done. his got like in up out. Like his mm. sounded very painful. Yeah, really painful. It sounded like it made really a lot of noises. All right, hey, listen, Bert Grossman's coming up a little bit later on. We'll talk to Bert about a variety of nonsense. You guys, sure. you guys didn't let me read the the because the uh, the premise of Space Jam Two came out, mm -hmm. and as much as I was against it. This movie has the potential to be an amazing movie, but we got to read sponsors. Now. All right, hold on. Save save it for a second here. Hey, yesterday at the beginning of our um, at the beginning of the show, this is actually before we go on the radio, and this is before we even go on podcast. We did a little pre roll conversation with Gary Cooper yesterday. Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services eight five eight three seven six twelve ninety nine. Uh, Alex, I thought it was pretty cool, though, the way Gary yesterday it wasn't like, hey, I've got 60 seconds and I better hurry up and get off the air. It was mm -hmm. more like really sitting down and explaining what's going on with interest rates and and, you know, why home prices are rising the way they are and, you know, uncertainty in the markets because of the you know pending election in just a couple of weeks. I found it to be quite an interesting uh, conversation. It's on the beginning of yesterday's podcast, the audio version and the video version. So you might want to check that out. Coop. Great to be with you, man. 16 years of you being a part of this show. Truly incredible. Thanking uh, from, from all the great friends who you've saved a ton of money for or gotten into homes. Thank you, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. And if you need him, he's there for you anytime. 858-376-1299. Okay, when's Bert? Is Bert coming up shortly? No, we still got okay. one another segment before old Bert. Okay, before Bert comes by. Because okay, there's good. a couple things that we need to talk about. Okay. We need to talk about uh, Aaron Donald, his interview on ESPN Live yesterday, mm -hmm. because there's something funny coming. We haven't talked about the Do the uh, Dodgers completely ignoring the Chargers on social media. We haven't talked, and there was another thing. Oh, uh, I don't know if you guys want to get to this. I think we should get to this. Uh, this guy, Jeffrey Tubin, who was uh, uh, doing it on a Zoom call, and OJ Simpson's reaction to it. Oh we haven't God. played it yet, and we oh, have to. Juice, what up? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let me let me get to all that stuff. Okay, L let's get there. Don't go anywhere. Stick around. All that stuff that Alex just talked about is coming up.
Hey, everybody, great friends. What's happening? It is Wednesday afternoon. Anybody that's just coming into our YouTube, make sure you like, click the thumbs up down below, jump into our YouTube live chat. Love to have you come down in and, and comment because all of these numbers really help us. So a lot of times I'm watching our YouTube and I can see we have several hundred people in our YouTube chat. And yet we've only got like 30 or 40 likes, bro. If you are in the YouTube chat, how hard is it for you to just click the like button? Can you, can you hook your boy up a little bit? Okay. So YouTubers, glad you're here. Facebookers, wherever you are around the country, around the world. I just see our man, uh, Jeremy Silverstein, a guy from San Diego, went to San Diego state, has been a, a, a contractor in Afghanistan for like the last seven, eight months. He decided at the beginning of COVID, I'll just go to Afghanistan. What the hell? Wow, just weird. gotten back Yeah, You know who Jeremy is, right? Yeah. The guy yeah. that always wears a suit. Yep. Like the yellow bright suits and stuff. Yeah. Like he's like, he's like the Jewish Steve Harvey. He dresses guy. like he's at opening day at Del Mar, but every day. Yeah. Right. Every day. And he just got back from Afghanistan and he's kind of like detoxing, if you will, and then getting ready to come back out to San Diego, but he's in Florida right now and he's watching on Facebook. So wherever you're at, whatever platform, Facebook, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and whoever else has our podcast. And for everybody, yo, in Radio Land in Southern California, home based in San Diego, glad you guys are here. All right. So, Alex, <laughs> Dude, go yeah. for it. What, no, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying what this is what you this is what you do during commercial breaks, J JV. You retweet compliments of Bears players. Yep. <laughs> you yep. just retweeted uh, from your boy, Scott Lewis Riddick. Bears defensive tackle Akeem Hicks doesn't get enough shine. That's going to change come Monday night. I think this was a preamble to me wanting to bring up Aaron Donald. But so okay. it was. So <laughs> yeah. it was. All right, let's do this because you know what? Th this is going to be – this is finally going to happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The Rams on, on Monday night are going to play the Bears. By the way, I have neglected to send, send any credential requests. Oh, my gosh. For the, for the games. We're not going. Come on, dude. Send an email to You're Arden. the one that works for the Ram station. Okay. Don't I'm be a wait around. I mean, no, I can do it, but it's listen. way much more effective if it comes from uh, your at ESPN Los Angeles email. You just said you just called yourself fat the other day. Throw your weight around. <laughs> get, these press, get these press things. No, really. Okay, real quick. Since we're going to do this on air, do you want me to send an email? I'll do it yeah. right now. Yeah. I'll do it right now. Go for it. Okay. Keep going then. Uh, I'm sending one at the same time. All right. You want me to talk um, about uh, why, why Aaron Donald was what, what we're going to talk about while you do that email? Well, here's the thing. Um, I want to ask you this before we get to Aaron Donald. You had mentioned before the break, you yes. had mentioned um, the, the Chargers and how the Dodgers ignore the Chargers. Yes. See, this gets back to the conversation earlier. LeBron James tweeting about the Dodgers is what the Dodgers want. Okay, you got the greatest player, the most famous player on the planet who plays in LA and just won a championship for the legendary Laker organization. If you're the Dodgers, you're probably asking LeBron James to do this. Is he doing it completely on his own? Possible, I suppose. Maybe. But but are the Dodgers like, hey, um, calling over to the Lakers, hey, can you guys get LeBron to do some Dodger tweets along the way? Because, you know, we're in the World Series. That would be really cool. But if I had to just take a guess, LeBron's doing this on his own. LeBron's like every other sports fan in America. He's at home. He's watching the game. And he's, and he's got his phone in his hands. So the Chargers continually try to just take a little bit, just get a little bit of chi from the already established brands of LA sports. And the Chargers yesterday send out a tweet that says, let's go at Dodgers, hashtag LA together, hashtag bolt up. And on this picture of the tweet, they've got Mookie Betts making a spectacular home run saving grab. They've got Bellinger cheering as he's going around the bases after hitting a home run. I don't even know who who are there. Are those Charger players wearing Dodger gear? Those are Dodger players wearing Charger gear. Dodger, Justin Turner, Justin uh -huh. Turner, and Dave Roberts. Oh, I couldn't even see that. So Dave, I mean, oh my. Oh Dave. man, oh, Scott. Man, Dave. 
Dave must be considered such a sellout around San Diego. I mean, Dave's the manager of the Dodgers and he's rocking a Chargers jersey and he's probably pissed off that the Chargers left San Diego, his hometown. But the, the Chargers send out these tweets trying to get something from the Dodgers. Please, Dodgers, please, you're in the World Series. Please give us just a little bit of social media, not love, just acknowledgement. Will you just like our tweet just so we know <laughs> that you know that we actually have a Twitter account? The Chargers constantly trying to jump on the Dodgers nutsack. And, and then it doesn't, it doesn't work. And then the funny part is that when the Rams do it, they responded basically immediately uh, where their game seven. I know it's hard to read here. Um, it says, all hands on deck for the Dodgers. This is what the Dodgers tweeted. The Rams played the same day, remember, on Sunday night against the Rams? I said, let's go. I said, let's go, boys. Take care of business. And the Dodgers replied, right back at you. So, like, there was some sort of, you know, back and forth. And yet, when the Chargers keep tweeting, not a damn thing. I'll guarantee you that the Dodgers internally have, like, this little policy. Like, don't help them. I don't I know why. Be surprised. I don't know why they have the policy. I just think they do. You but know, you were why. talking about you were talking you know about why. how I told y'all about this like four times already. I will repeat this one more time. LA is about star power. Who do you get seen with? Okay, if you Angelina Jolie, you cannot be going to lunch with some D list celebrity. Okay, that's what this is. The Dodgers are Angelina Jolie and the Rams are Brad Pitt. Y'all got to hang out together or Jennifer Anderson if you just want to keep it ladylike. That's what this is. They can't be seen going to lunch with Courtney Cox, can't do it. Who the hell's Courtney Cox, by the way? <laughs> From Friends. She was Courtney Monica. Cox. Yeah, she was on Friends, and then she had another show. I don't remember. It was a bit more edgy, where she was like a mom, and she was constantly drinking wine. Like, 5 o'clock came. She was pouring wine. What was the name of that show Courtney Cox had after Friends? You guys don't know? Cougar Town. Was, no. Oh, Cougar yeah. Town. Yeah, Cougar Town. Cougar Town. I was going to say, yeah, she was in course, Scream. Of course, Browner would know Cougar Town, because if there's white women who are divorced in their 40s, they know Browner. You ever and been to in, in one town? Uh, pff, what? You ever been to the charcoal yeah. house in La Mesa? What? The charcoal house in the La Mesa. Charcoal house in La Mesa, JP. Come on, man. Don't be doing that to me publicly. No I'm just asking there. if you've ever been there before. My business out there like that. <laughs> charcoal you... house, by the way, Scott, is like Cougar Central. It's Cougar Town, basically. Really in La Mesa? Uh yeah. My my old roommate like was a little mini John Browner, and he he lived at that place on, on the weekends. So wait, so you're old roommate alex the guy who was really no, no, another one Different i was guy. in college dude. i had like 10 roommates so and these were these were roommates who they were like hey look we're in our early 20s there's mm -hmm. women there very that are early their 20s 40s, you know they like young guys yes uh, who don't necessarily take the total t because they're living don't the total need, need the total t right and these these ladies like the young boys mm -hmm. huh? yep yep very much so uh went there once myself it was <laughs> 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 that's a fun place really? um yeah, it's just it's crazy because it's literally like, I mean, listen, JB, you don't want me to put your spot out there, but I'm, I don't even know if they're open right now or not because of COVID. No, they're not. Okay. <laughs> no, <you wouldn't. laughs> no, they ain't open. <laughs> there's a there's a there's another place. I, I won't say the place's name, but it's in a community that just got built off the Ted Williams Freeway. It's uh, they got a place in there too, where buddy, woo, it's about to go down. Man, listen, all them divorcees, all them empty homes out there, man. Boy, you must just love it, too, because it's all these white ladies, too, and they see you, mm -hmm. and they're like, you know, I've always had this fantasy about what would it be like to be with a brother, you know? And then there they are, and there you are, and they're like, you know what? I hate my ex-husband so much. God, now I hate him. You know, you know what would really piss off my ex-husband? If he found out I took this guy home, <laughs> and I just banged his brains out. If, and then, and that's what if, happened. This is how it used. Listen, I'm, let me slow down. Look, so Look at the smile on his face. What happens is they go, it needs to get back to this person. So usually I end up meeting somebody's son or somebody's daughter. Ugh. Let's shake their hand. Not like I'm eating dinner with them. You just, right. you, hey, this and is then, my, son, this yeah. is my daughter or whatever. And then dad gets the kids back and he's like, so how's mom doing? She's okay. She was hanging out with some black guy. Yeah, she she dating anybody? I don't know, but some big black guy was in our house this morning. <laughs> Eating bacon. <laughs> <laughs> well, wearing your underwear that you left, Dad. Whoa, Ilk, what are you doing? 
That's gross, dude. You don't wear the dude's underwear. I know. It is a little weird though. Like, like I, this is kind of a weird personal thing, but my, my girlfriend, um, you know, she'd been divorced a year and a half, two years, whatever it is. I mean, husband, ex-husband moved out of the house, I don't know, four or five years ago, whatever it is. Right. And, um, when he left, he just left and his medicine cabinet in the bathroom still has all of his stuff in it. So a lot of times I'll use his hair gel, <laughs> you know, stuff that's probably been in there for four years, you know? It's like a hotel. You just open the thing and it's got stuff in it. Listen, I, my girlfriend, she got a great house. She got wonderful sons. She got, you know, a great place. Um, but I, I, I think to myself sometimes like, okay, so this is her place. You know, like it's just, Browner, I can't imagine you meeting kids. Like I, it took a long time to meet her kids. She got wonderful young boys, right? It's taken me a long time to meet these guys. To buddy up. These guys are cool guys. But you're like, in their house the next morning dude they have zero intention of having any meaningful relationship this is just to upset someone oh, <laughs> you're the upset someone guy yeah 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 ain't nothing happening with this this ain't yeah. real jb has no problem being used baby yeah 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 yeah. everything listen everybody if you play your role man play your role sometimes yeah, I don't, you, gotta, you know i don't know how we got from the chargers supporting the dodgers into Cougar Town, Corny yeah. Cox. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but I have another tweet that's a very, very, very Charger tweet recently. I don't know if you guys follow the uh, the National Women's Soccer League, NWSL. They got an, uh, an expansion team in LA owned by one of the act, you know, the actress Natalie Portman. Yes. So she's one of the owners, whatever. Um, and the name is Angel City, Angel City FC. Mm -hmm. And they were announced today as official new members of the of the league. And the Chargers, what do you just want to, what do you think they tweeted? Like, let me just ask you guys this. So Angel City FC tweets out a video saying, hey, we're here, whatever. The Chargers quote tweeted it. So it's the video below it. What did they tweet on top? Welcome to LA. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like, welcome to the family. Yeah, like okay. they've been there forever. Yeah, like, yeah. welcome to town, you know? Pretty damn close. Welcome to the city. Oh, good God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did they like it? I don't I don't know if they liked it, but uh, the down here is like welcoming other teams to the city that still hasn't welcomed you. Yeah. So I, the replies I, are pretty I, hilarious. I'm all for professional women's soccer. I've been trying to explain to my daughter. I'm like, dude, you, you're giving up on your soccer career now. I'm like, four years from now, by the time you graduate college, Dude, the Women's Professional Soccer League will be four, five, six years into existence, and it'll just be getting better. There'll yep. be more money to be made. It'll be more fun. I'm like, you could be playing soccer till you're 30 years old. What do you play as long as she's, you can play? She's given up? She's not playing no more? She just got this injury that just won't go away. Uh, you know? Yeah. I would tell you this about quitting sports. The politics of sports is very heavy. And if you feel like you have been dealt a bad hand or not been given a fair shake, and if and you're really good, you can get really soured on basketball because that happened to me too. For two years, I didn't play. I didn't play at all because I felt like I did not get a good shake, and I felt like the the business of basketball kind of spit in my face, and I did not like what happened. Mm. I just quit playing ball when uh, after my third NFL training camp, I was like, you know what, this sucks. You know, like I loved college football. I had so much fun. I loved my teammates. I loved being in school. I loved the whole thing. This trying out for NFL teams and getting cut and and not having relationships with anybody and just th th this sucks. I hate it. And I remember I remember being with the Chargers as a, a undrafted free agent in probably 1991 or two. I don't remember exactly what year it was. And we would go out to practice at UCSD. And I'd walk out onto the practice field and I'd look up and there was extra sports 690 in the stands. They were broadcasting from every practice back then. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, that kind of looks like more fun than being out here. <laughs> and of course, as I look back on it now, I wish I would not have thought that way. I wish I would have been like, you know what? I'll get there later on. Right. Let's see how long you can play. Um, but man, yeah, you just, you know, you keep getting cut by teams and you can't find the right home. And, you know, then you just, you, I guess everybody's kind of got their own story in sports, you know? Yeah. I was a good player and I got to college and I got hurt and that was the end of it. You know, 
everybody's got a story, but um, y'all want to anyway, hear my story? Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, I I always thought I was pretty damn good at baseball, like you know, making like all star, all county, high school varsity, all that crap. My junior year in baseball, we played Delman Young. And his team, they were like <laughs> one of our rivals. Delman Young was the number one pick in 2003 by the Detroit, Detroit Tigers or something. Uh huh. And he, we, we had bases loaded the first time his at bat. He had bases loaded, and we still walked him because that's how much we didn't want to give up a home run. Uh-huh. The other, the other ones, they're just like, okay, we're just gonna pitch this guy. We faced him t- four times in my career. He, I t- promise you, not 12 home runs against us i was like okay i'm not good at baseball like <laughs> guy's good at baseball and then my senior year we go up and we we go up to this reseda and i forget the guy's name but he got drafted in the first round too he was throwing 98 mile per hour fastballs in high school and then like oh. and then off speed stuff that i've never seen before i went 0 for 4 four strikeouts and i was like you know what this is fun man but i'm that's not good like mm. but, like I, there's no future here that's just my realization it was never an injury it was never it was just a realization like yo this was fun I'm done. Like mm. I'm not that good. Yeah. The Delvin yeah, Young fun. one was freaking stupid. That guy, I don't know why he didn't I mean, he threw a bat at someone in minor leagues. Maybe that's why he didn't uh, succeed, but that guy was ridiculous, dude. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. You see guys now though, like this kid Mickey Moniak from La Costa Canyon High School was the number 1 overall draft choice a couple years ago and uh was brought up at the end of the year for the for the Philadelphia <laughs> Phillies and you know, he's on the major league club or um, I see this kid uh, who was a kid here, played at Torrey Pines. He's on the Houston Astros. Uh, you guys know my boy, Dr. Zimmer. Both of his boys are in the major leagues. I mean, I see these kids who are the truly exceptional kids, which is why I mentioned Moniac. Um, I, I mentioned the Zimmer boys. Uh, you know, I mentioned these kids from Torrey Pines. This is what I was saying to you guys earlier about the Dodgers. When I look at Bellinger and I look at uh, Seeger. And I look at these guys, they're the same kinds of kids that would have been in the neighborhood that were the best little league players. Bellinger, the players. Bellinger was Bellinger was little in league. the Little League World yeah. Series. Was there's, the like little video, league. Yeah, there's videos of him. He looks exactly the same, just tiny. Yeah. All right. Where are we? Let's see. Bert's coming up in a second. I do want to say one thing before Bert gets here. Um, Seven Mile Casino is just minutes from downtown San Diego. And if you want to be a winner and you want to have a great time, and you want to feel safe and in a healthy environment, they've moved the casino outside. They've put it underneath a tent. They pump in fresh air. The dealers are wearing gloves and masks, and there's partitions between players, meaning they've gone out of their way to open and also make you feel as safe as possible. You win a big stack of chips, you take them. Well, guess what? There's hand sanitizing stations all over because they want you to be clean. They want you to be healthy. They want you to have fun. And most importantly, want you to win. Seven Mile Casino is open. Come have some fun, just minutes from downtown San Diego. And I keep saying that when it's cool and we can all do it, let's just do it. Poker tournament, blackjack tournament, raise money for a local organization or for a needy family, whatever it is we decide to do, whatever motivates us, we'll do it at Seven Mile Casino. SevenMileCasino.com is a website so you can read all about what they're doing and how safe they're making it for you. All right, Alex, you had a bunch of other stuff that we were talking about. Yeah, other than real the quick. What was it? Uh, we still got two minutes in this segment, so I'm going to go into – because it's going to it's going to bleed over to the next event I'm sure. Aaron Donald versus Khalil Mack. Uh yesterday Aaron Donald was on NFL Live on ESPN and Browner I feel I now officially feel bad for Nick Foles. So you may not realize this, but you're going to face the Bears and Nick Foles on Monday Night Football. You've never sacked him and you've played him 3 times. <laughs> Do you keep tabs on these guys that you sack and and there if that's the case, like why haven't you sacked Nick Foles yet? I know. Um, I don't know. I just ain't get to him yet. I gotta find a way though. But um, you know, I, I'm gonna go out there and play. I'm gonna I'm gonna study and um, you know, hopefully I get them opportunities and I get to him this, this time. So we're gonna see. Thanks for thanks for the motivation too. Last, by the way. There you go. <laughs> Four sacks. I'm calling it right now. Man, let me break something down to you. He about to get outplayed by Hakeem Hicks. Stamp it. That's why I retweeted what I retweeted from the great future GM Lewis Riddick and also in the Monday Night Football booth. You see what he's doing? Hicks will outplay Aaron Donald. On top of on top of Mac Daddy just showing complete domination. Oh, okay, I was gonna say this. See what he's doing right here, Scott. I'm moving off. No, no, no. I ain't changing players. I'm, fi- I'm no, no, you're not. But you're you're giving us other players and in- when Mac doesn't do well, no, you're no, like, no, well, no. what about Akeem Hicks? Better no, defensive no, no. tackle. I'm giving you a player to player comparison. 
Okay. Okay. So you can see that Akeem Hicks will outplay Aaron Donald. And then on top of that, Khalil Mack will absolutely destroy the Rams. So then you can clearly see the difference between the two players. Again, Aaron Donald is a great player, but he ain't in the class of Mack. All right. Well, let's let's get Burke Grossman's opinion on this because the Rams are playing the Bears, which puts Browner's man Khalil Mack against our man Aaron Donald head to head. They won't play each other head to head, but at the end of the game, I mean, if the Bears win, we'll never hear the end of it. If the Ever. Bears win and Khalil Mack has a big game, then we'll never hear the end of it. Ever, ever, ever. You or John Clayton? Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, here's Burt Grossman. Burt is up next. Don't go anywhere. All right, great friends. Burt Grossman is here on a Wednesday, as he normally is. What's always interesting about having Burt on the show, be it if you're a watcher, a viewer on Facebook or on YouTube, you always are interested to see where Burt may be. I like it when he's at his house in Benita and his dog is lurking in the background, kind of looks like a lion in the middle of the wilderness. Dog is so big. I like that one. I also really like it when his girlfriend, fiance, excuse me, Tanya, Tanya Vasquez, gorgeous, by the way. I always love it when Tanya helps him set up. Um, but I do see Tanya on Facebook seems to be down in Florida right now. Yeah, so tomorrow night she comes back. Yeah, she seems to be in the, in the hottest of hot spots of COVID right now is Tanya. Yeah, yeah, Marco Island. That's right. So here is Burt Grossman, the always fearless, controversial, say anything, former first round draft choice of the Chargers, and now head football coach of the Indoor Football League's San Diego Strike Force. Here's Burt Grossman. Hi, Look, Bert. I got fan mail here too, Scott. Look, I still get some fan mail. You like that? I do like that. Bert Don't hate on me. All right. Yeah, for those of you that are listening, Burt is just holding up the Sports Illustrated from probably what, Burt 92, 3, something like that? What is that magazine from? October 1990. Yeah, Burt on the cover of, uh, of Sports Illustrated. Freaking cool, man. Yeah. Is that the actual, that's the full magazine? That's not just the cover, like the full magazine from that day? Yeah. You know what the worst part is? If you look at this and you look at like the car ads, you feel old as hell. Look at that. Oh, Buick Skylark? Is that what that is right there? Is that a Volvo? That's a Volvo. Yeah. Just yeah. horrible. Tommy Lasorda still a manager at Dodgers. That's when you feel old, man. Actually, that is a really funny idea. Before we get going here today, Burt Grossman, Go, yeah. to the, go to the front of, of that Sports Illustrated, 1990. You're on the cover. Can we all see the cover of the magazine? It'll make for a, a good thumbnail picture of our, uh, of our podcast today. Big Mouth. That's what they call him. He's the NFL's Big Mouth is who he is. Look at some, him. Can you, can you still make that face? never change. You can smoke some camel cigarettes. Wow, that's the one right there where that's old. If there's this a tobacco old. ad. On the back of the yeah, magazine. With a cartoon the very back, character. Yeah. The Joe very camel. back of the magazine is, is, uh, is a camel cigarette mag. Yeah. How about that? Bert, open it up, though. What are the stories in October? You say it was October of 1990? Yeah, remember when the, when the female, the first female reporter went in the locker room with the Bengals and they got all crazy? Yeah, what was her name? I don't remember. Mm. Let's see what else in there, Scott. 1990, 30 years ago, Bert's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. What are the stories in Sports Illustrated? Female reporter goes into an NFL locker room. Okay, we're long past that. Merit cigarettes. I don't even know if they have those anymore. Merit cigarettes uh, for an advertisement. I don't, yeah, I don't know that there's merits anymore. I'm, I don't really I don't know like anybody that smokes anymore. I don't even think I'm in this magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was the story oh, about? Okay, like, what was the story about? Just you being a big mouth? You saying whatever you want? <laughs> look, Meathead Central. Oh, my God. Look at this picture of Bert. Why, are you, why, are you, are you, why do you have a roll of toilet paper in your hands? COVID. COVID, man. I couldn't sleep. Were you wearing Zubas or was that just your sheets? I couldn't tell. I had uh, I had Zumbas on. I'm not looking through this magazine anymore. It's freaking depressing. Can you at least just do us one favor? Read read the opening paragraph of the article about you. All right, Sports Illustrated, October 1990, 30 years ago. What Bert makes you think I can in, read? Bert's in like his second year, I think. Second, first or second year with the Chargers. Not second year with the Chargers. He's made an impact. He'll say anything about anybody. And uh, and the Chargers. I'm not reading that. I'm not reading. Come, Come on, on. Come on. Read first... No, read, read, the first... yeah. read. You know I can't read. Stop it. I'm like Dexter Manley a pit. Is Come it on, that, seriously. Is it that embarrassing? Come on, man, read it. 
You know how lame that would sound if I do a reading of my own article from 30 years ago on air? Oh, come on, dude. I'll lose all my high paying endorsements. Well, um, that's no fun, by the way. Bert Grossman, you had an outstanding collegiate and professional career. You are a highly respected man. You've got a beautiful woman who left you for Florida and will soon be leaving you for me. Read Mm -hmm. the article, man. You know, when you put it that way, all right. How are my dogs? They're doing good. They're a little heavy. You ready? Yeah. This is the worst radio in the history of radio, just so you know. And and I want to know a record that I didn't want to do this. Okay. I'm reading Burt Grossman. That's <laughs> is lying in bed with large wads of toilet paper sticking out of his ears. But the dim in the locker room is so loud, he is awakened over and over again. His head shook straight off the pillow, only to find room silent and dark. It's a good thing for my girlfriend doesn't snore, Grossman says. I can't sleep. If there's noise whatsoever, if somebody breathes heavy, I have to put toilet paper in my ears. This is, there, that's all I'm reading. Sounds that's like why a, the toilet paper is in my ears. Sounds like a riveting piece. What a hey, Tom, they started the voice. article about like that, and it was about you being a badass? Mm-hmm. It wasn't about me being a badass, but about me being run in my mouth. <clears throat> mm. And they started, who, yeah. God, why did I show you this thing? Because you wanted to talk about it. You got to treat it Bruce with care, Newman. man. It's a collectible item. Who? Bruce Newman. That guy sucks. You want to hear something? You want to see something really good? Pimp it on that Diamond 92 medallion on that rope chain. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's really funny about this, by the way, is that Bert put out a tweet the other day when I saw when Deion Sanders posted that Lewis Riddick should be an NFL general manager. Bert jumped in and said, "Yeah, you know, he's like one of the smartest football guys I know." And then Dion, I think, jumped into what you said. Did you and Dion play together in like some kind of collegiate all star game or something? Yeah, we played at the hula ball together, and he had like the full Jerry curl, and, like ten pounds of jewelry on. Uh, track suit in 90 degree uh hawaii weather I, I put a picture of that one up and then he retweeted it yeah what was he what was he like in person like for real for real not like no cameras around just like on the field practicing being around you know he was he's great i mean the weird thing was that year the the two people got all the um all the attention it was dion and tony mandridge and both of them came off like these assholes but they're both like the nicest guys in the world. I mean, you don't total opposite of what they made out, but I think they were bright enough and the first ones to figure it out. If you, you know, if you drew more attention to yourself, especially an offensive lineman who never got it, then it could only be good for you. And that's why they did it. But then the media blew it up more and more and more. And then it, it became these expectations. They couldn't, you know, keep up with not Dion. Dion kept up with them, but not so much from Anders, but no, they're both nicest people in the world. Wow. All right. Burke Grossman is here and he breaks out the Sports Illustrator from 1990. He breaks out some pictures from the late 80s in the Hula Bowl. He and Dion are going back and forth on Twitter. And now here's Burt back onto the airwaves and the stream on YouTube and Facebook and Apple Podcasts and Spotify and everywhere else. And yeah, also on 1090. Hey, Burt, before we uh, get rolling here, we want to bring up Aaron Donald versus Khalil Mack. It's kind of the first thing on our minds. But first, I got to ask you, Burt. Mm-hmm. Former first round draft choice, now in his nearly mid 50s. I got you to the Total T Clinic. It only took a few minutes to get your testosterone levels checked. How's it going since you've started with your Total T? Oh, it couldn't be better. I, <laughs> I almost beat up my neighbor last night. That's how good it's going. But um, I love that stuff. I've been bothering you for two years. I can't believe you didn't get me on it. And it's like, you don't realize it for the first two or three weeks, but then when it kicks in, then you realize the difference. I couldn't even imagine getting off it now. Um, but yeah, I love it. I don't know why I like giving myself a needle more the way it makes me feel, but it's good. It's good all the, I mean, you know, you expect the same things, you know, sexually. Oh yeah. You, you, you more active, but you know, it's the energy. Um, you sleep better at night. It's just everything. It's just a better quality of life. What does this have to do with almost beating up your neighbor? Why would you, that's not a neighborly thing to do. Yes, it is, uh, depending on your neighbor. Yeah. And if you get into that total T roid rage, it goes off. <laughs> what happened with you and your neighbor? I don't I ain't bringing it up. Because I still might beat his ass. You have Why? neighbors? I thought you lived out in like in a ranch or something. 
No, no, I live on a hill, so it looks like that's like a long ranch, but I don't even really have a big backyard. It's just on the top of a hill, so it looks over everything. So what would you and your neighbor be getting into an argument about? I don't want to talk about it in case I decide to beat him up. I need to, you know, well, I don't want to. Let, let, me, let me encourage you. Do you still have goats? <laughs> no, no, I got rid of my goats. So it's not the goats. Is it your no. dog just pooping everywhere? No, no. Well, you know what? It's my old neighbor. It's not my new neighbor. And why, but, but I'm going to encourage you to not beat him up. Okay. Just so take beating him up off the table. Now, at least tell us what the conflict is so we could help resolve it. Uh, no. <laughs> why? You know what? I don't think I want to come on the show anymore. You push me or read an article. Now I got to tell you about my neighbor. Well, first of all, you, you got to keep coming up. on this show because we're going to be doing this show, Bert, you and I, and that show is going to be off the chain because we're going to be talking about you beating the hell out of your neighbor as the first True. segment. So, True. Uh, yeah, I don't want to use all my content on that. I'm probably, saving this for Browner. That's probably, I want to okay. talk about my Cowboys. Oh! oh. Your oh. Cowboys. Your, your Super Bowl prediction of the Dallas Cowboys. Burke Grossman is here. Your I'm Super out. I also, said, I also said the Steelers, which are doing well. Mm -hmm. Hear me out, right? Hear me out. Hear me out. You only need five wins in the NFC East to get a playoff spot, which they will get. <laughs> They're going to trade for Ryan Fitzpatrick. By next week, by the de when's the deadline, the, the fifth or the third, he's going to be a starting quarterback. I'm sticking with my Super Bowl prediction. So you think the Cowboys are going to trade for Fitzmagic now that they have named two of their starter, which, by the way, I'm not 100% sure I even understood that. So I thought that Tua was your starter probably week one, but Fitzmagic has been pretty good, as he usually is. Not great, but three and three, pretty good. Mm -hmm. I wonder what made the Dolphins all of a sudden just make this switch now. Are they like, well, we actually think we're pretty good and we think he could really help us be a lot better. I'm not really sure why they're doing this now. Um, I mean, I would have thought Tua would have been the better player from day one, but I love your idea that, that what the Cowboys need is some Fitz, Fitz magic to get them back. They do. And I don't, I, I think, I think what makes it work, if Fitz magic's been to every team in the league, it seems like, so he's not the long-term answer that the Dolphins need. They, they got that Tua. You know, the coach sees him every day in practice. He must have thought it was time. But I saw Fitzpatrick didn't take it so well. And At all. Didn't go with the team line or anything. So that was even more. It's like, oh, you're getting traded now. Dude. Yeah. I so mean, Can I ask you a question? Because I think the Dolphins looked around and they saw Justin Herbert being amazing. And they saw Joe Burrow being serviceable. And they looked at their guy, who they thought was better than both of those dudes, and go, well, if they're doing that, imagine what our guy can do going forward. And they just decided to, to, to move. Does that actually happen? I don't know if that happens. I mean, they were going to happen anyway. It's not like, you know, the old days, you take a quarterback and he could sit for a year or two. But that doesn't seem to happen anymore. Everybody gets thrown in the fire. Um, you know, they got a bye week, so it gets two weeks for him to start off his, his first um, game or prepare. But – I'm sure it has something to go with it because, you know, the fans are all looking around and they're like, we could, our guy's better than them or they think he's better than them. But I don't know. You know, Anthony Lynn still thinks Tyrod Taylor's better than Justin Herbert. So maybe they're going to trade for Tyrod Taylor. Who knows what he said? <laughs> That's so, sarcasm. So, by the way, it's interesting because when Tua went into the game and the Dolphins were well ahead of the Jets and the Jets posed no threat of coming back, when Tua went into the game – it was Fitzmagic who was on the sideline, like kind of pumping up the fans, like, yeah, this young kid's going in. It looked like a guy who felt pretty secure about his position. Yeah. And now yeah. Fitzmagic is, is actually talking that he's pissed that, that well, they're he replacing said, him. I'll read the exact quotes because it was it's like, and then when you watch the video, it's like heartbreaking how sad he is. He was like, uh, is this the exact quote? Is this it? Was that my last game in the NFL being a starter? I've been a starter. I've been benched all kinds of different ways, but this one, I felt like I was fully committed and invested, felt this was my team. I felt like it was my team, and that's why my heart was so heavy yesterday. My heart just hurt all day. It was heartbreaking for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have two words for you, baby. Kirk Cousins. Fifth oh. magic, I will take you in Minnesota, sir. Come on over. Because, I, you know, there's a little thing like, yeah, Dallas makes sense, I guess, but I think Andy Dalton will still get more chances. In Minnesota, there's one reason why they, they are not benching Kirk Cousins. Because their backup is Sean Mannion. Their backup is Sean Mannion. What, you're not going to get better. 
Fitzmagic, I think, might make them better. Give them a little spark. He, I think or, if Fitzmagic wanted to get traded, I think the Dolphins will let him get traded because he can't play in the NFL. How long do you keep Cousins in, though, before – or I mean – because at some point you want to justify the contract. Didn't they give him an extension last spring for like another $22 million? Yes, Bert. The Vikings have committed fully to over $100 million in Kirk Cousins. <laughs> mm. So, it went, I mean, at some point you got to be like, damn, if I bench him, that's just <laughs> – that, Well, the, the thing that, is like – I don't know if you can survive that. You guys have been around the league a lot longer than me. Like at what point does the GM admit his mistake to save his own job? Because yeah. the Vikings supposedly – I mean, they're not, but supposedly they're supposed to be a good team. And the GM is the one that gave this kid $100 million. At one point, you just throw a Hail Mary and be like, well, let me go bring somebody in. Let me try and go get Sam Darnold. Let me try and go get Fitz, uh, Fitzpatrick. Like, I have the like, answer to that question. Three years. Because that's what the Bears do with Mitch Trubisky. They looked at him for three years and went, okay, he ain't good. We need to figure something else out while he's still on the roster so we can save face. And that's but what they least, did with Nick Foles. But at least they went out and got Nick Foles in the offseason. What we're talking about here is – Fitz magic having to go from Miami to Dallas or Miami to Minnesota as possibilities. I mean, Bert, how hard would it be? Almost impossible, really, I would think, for a guy to go from one offense to another offense, not just the terminology and the playbook, but also the difference in the players, timing, everything else. It's got to be, I would think it'd be, I'm trying to even think of when's the last time a quarterback got traded, doesn't even have to be a starter, and then went and started for somebody else. I don't, yeah, I can't remember one. But, I mean, if anybody can do it, it's, it's Fitzpatrick. I mean, he's been to, what, seven, eight, nine teams, and he's, and he's always performed well. Um, but back to Kirk Cousins, I think, I, I think if you admit a $100 million mistake, you're getting fired. Yeah. And the thing about Cousins is Cousins can sling it. He just makes those <laughs> interceptions. I mean, he still tries to hit these windows you can't hit. Um, and, you know, it's kind of disturbing after, you know, You've been in the league so long, you're still trying to make those throws that you know you can't make um, or nobody can make but Marino. So, but if you take away the three interceptions, he kills it every week. But it's always those two or three or stupid plays. And that's the thing about throwing away the hundred million. You're like, look, this guy has a talent. He can do it. Man, let's get a psychiatrist or something here. Why does he keep doing this same like force and stuff when he doesn't have to? And I think that's the answer, but I, I don't know. I don't how know. Many, he does it everywhere. Many- how many quarterbacks in the league do what he does where, where you're, you're, you're not really good, but you do enough where you're like, you know what? Maybe. Like, they won 12 games last year. They made it to the, you know, like to the second round of the playoffs. They beat yeah, they the Saints. Were in the divisional round. Right. Like, I mean, they got destroyed by the Niners, but at, like, he keeps showing signs of, of flash where he's like, and then to give him $100 million. But as, like, yeah, is the GM going to get fired? He's probably going to get fired anyways. Might right, as well try and do question. something. Let me ask you a question. Who would you rather have quarterback your team right now? You ready? Phillip Rivers. <laughs> I know where you're going. I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phillip Rivers. Yeah, you know, I mean, or Kirk Cousins. I mean, to me, they're the same kind of guy. Yeah, but I, mean, the difference, I think the difference, the difference is I think Rivers could make those throws, you know, three, four years ago. Rivers is old, and that's, that's part of his problem. His mind's still the same where he thinks he can make that window and make that throw, and he has the arm strength, which he doesn't because he's older. Um, you know, Brady doesn't try to do that anymore because he doesn't have the same arm. Fitzpatrick has the arm. He just mentally still does it anyway. I mean, Rivers thinks he can make the throw because he could make it four years ago. But when you're 38, you can't make the throw you made when you were uh, 28. It's just the way it is. But Cousins is still young, so his problem's even worse to me. All right, Burt Grossman is here on a Wednesday afternoon being presented by the Total Tea Clinic. Burt feels so good he might beat up his former neighbor. Now, Mm -hmm. Burt, jump into this debate right away. Monday Night Football, Rams, Bears, Aaron Donald versus Khalil Mack. The the two big star defensive players on the field, not quite at the same time, but in the same game. Who do you think comes out on top? You know, I think last week was the first time against San Francisco I've seen Aaron Donald actually get handled to the point that it looked like he quit. <laughs> um, so, huh. Huh. yeah, it did. And, and I love him and everything, but it's, it's – I, I think when you get a game like that where you have, like, one assist and no sacks or maybe a couple pressures, you know, offensive lines look at film and they take the same scheme to take him away because if you take him away, you're taking everything away. It's one thing if you're an edge rusher, you don't get in the quarterback's face, but when pressure comes up the middle, 
that screws everything up. I mean, you're in his face, you're in his lanes, you're in everything. If I'm coming from the side of you, the quarterback doesn't see me. I mean, you might get a sack, but it doesn't affect every play that you get penetration. That's that's the scary thing about him. He always gets penetration, and he's always in the lane. He's always in the quarterback's face, so he can't look downfield. But, you know, they the 49ers pretty much neutralized him. If that continues to be – I don't know if everybody can do that or it was just a one-off and he had a bad game, but he's still better than Cleo Mack. I mean, come on. Come on. Look, brother, let me tell you this right now. You just said it yourself. He tapped out last game. He so tapped I, out. Yeah, he tapped out. So, no some, doubt. so maybe – just maybe the 49ers have given you the formula for him to tap out week after week after week. Other coaches get paid too. Other people watch film too. And if you're smart, and Chuck Pagano is supposed to be one of the smarter defensive coordinators in the league, you'll see what they did and you'll follow suit because the Bears' offensive line is terrible. All right, hold on a second. Burke Roseman is here. Burke, you got a few more minutes or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, all the money you're paying me, I couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's total T clinic. It's it's total T clinic getting the kind of endorsement that you've given them. I feel so good. I'm going to beat my neighbor up. That is a good one, isn't it? Yeah, pretty good. All right, hold on. More with Burke Grossman coming right back. All right, more with Burke Grossman being brought to you by the Total T Clinic. So, outside of what you said earlier. You mm-hmm. kind of told us that when you got your testosterone checked, it took about 15 minutes, number one. But number two, you said you kind of felt it pretty quickly. Is that the case? You no, know, I, I felt it in about the first – you know, I, I think a lot of us mental. You get, you get your first shot and you're like, oh, it's going through my system. But I think that's a lot of psychological. It's about two weeks in. Right in that, right in that break, I, was doing, I just did 100 push-ups right now. You don't see it, but I did it right there during that commercial break. Mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm. the kind of energy I have. I'm feeling you, man. I'm telling you, I see now, guys. Back on Total T. Yeah, back well, to Total. You know that you like over the weekend on social media, you put that thirst trap video up of you with your shirt off. Okay, Bert. Wait, you want to explain that? Okay, Bert. Um, so, so, okay, you called it a. And thirst you didn't trap. respond to my. You didn't respond to my reply about put your shirt back on. Or you're going to lose your Total T endorsement. You never <laughs> replied to that. No, it, I didn't. I didn't see it. Here's the deal. Here, here's the situation. So, <laughs> Saturday, I did this ridiculous Ironman race. One mile swim in the ocean, 133 mile bike ride, six mile run, all to support challenge athletes. Off the couch, no training. So Alex is there in the morning and he's videotaping, doing like some Instagram live. Alex, did it ever occur to you that as I was taking off the wetsuit, I just looked like a big fat seal? Did it not occur to you like, this kid doesn't need to be shirtless on social media. Like I should probably go find something else to shoot. Right. So I asked you, do you want me to record? And you said, yes. So oh. I started recording. <laughs> oh, I would never leave. Because, and, the reason, and the reason I asked that I, 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 because I am very aware of how people want to be seen or not seen on camera. And I know I asked you because I asked Rachel, Hey, do you want to be on camera? Cause she was in a bikini top and she said, no. And the same way I asked you, and you said, yeah, go ahead, record. I didn't know you were going to start taking your, your – getting all – seeing nipples and stuff. That's on you, Oh, dude. he knew. Well, the, he knew, other, well, well, the other part that's really, I mean, ridiculous is, I mean, like I'm pulling off this wetsuit and, you know, I mean, you, like I'm pulling it down, down. Like it's getting close, you know? And so um, I'll tell you this, though, Bert. As, 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 <laughs> I like how you put it on me. I asked as, you. I, as fat and as juicy as I think I am, I actually saw myself on tape and I didn't know who like it was. I, I didn't know it was me and I was like – Who's that guy? He's freaking yoked. And I was like, hey, you put on, dude, yeah. if you would have put on a Speedo and been walking down the beach in North Miami, you would have fit right in. I mean, that, that's what you look like. It's like an old Greek or Jewish guy that was just out there <laughs> taking a walk looking for seashells. All I can tell you is this, pal, is that I took the total T on Thursday, and I did mm-hmm. the 140.6 miles on Saturday, and I didn't want to go into that race without the total T. So that's all I'm trying that's to say. That's all you need. Like you said, you just go off the couch. We've got the shots. Then you have to try. Tell you what, guys, you don't feel good. You feel tired. You feel fat. You feel uh, like you're not getting it done in the bedroom. Total T Clinic, totaltclinic.com. And uh, Bert is now, Bert is no longer hearing about it. Bert's living it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm due for a shot today. He didn't choose that Total T life. That Total T life chose him. Damn right. You hear that, Browner? Listen, that ain't got nothing to do with the Bears going to the Super Bowl. Man, I want my house. <laughs> <laughs> 
Don't you try to – Wait, do you say going to the Super Bowl or winning the Super Bowl? Winning. We Our bet is for them to win. Oh, God. Yeah, man, you got no job. I'll throw in even more. I can give my bank account to them. Listen, we 5-1. and one. We're getting ready to play. I give my bank account. Listen, we 5-1. and one. If we win next week, we're going to be 6 and On Monday night, we're going to be 6-1 and one against a team whose only wins against the NFC East. I feel real good, okay? I'm not scared of Aaron Donald, who he play for. Okay, that's how I feel about him right now. You want the bank count? It's overdrawn, but I, I'll throw it in. That's <laughs> mine, too. So that'd be both of us with no money. There we go. <laughs> so, Bert, Aaron Donald for the Rams, Khalil Mack for the, for the Bears. It's an ongoing debate on this show. Browner says Khalil Mack is the best defensive player in the league. In fact, I think he might even say he's the best overall player in the league. He said all time. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah. Right. Come no, there's, there, no, there's, listen, you talk about best quarterback all time. You talk Carson Wentz. You talk best pitcher all oh, time. See, no, that's true. What, what, what? You talk best pitcher all time. You talk Clayton Kershaw. True. That's you, true. You talk best defensive player in the history of the NFL. According to Browner, you're talking about Khalil Mack. True story. Mm-hmm. Wow. That, God, I, I just, I, I didn't I, know you were saying all that. Know, listen, crazy. Reggie White was great. Reggie White was before this. It was Reggie White before this. Before this, Reggie White was the greatest defensive player ever. Now it's Khalil Mack. All right, man. Times change. Okay, Jordan was the greatest player ever. Then LeBron came, and then people think LeBron. Oh, like, oh, oh my God! Debates. But we know oh, it's my Jordan, God, dude. just like we know it's Mack. Does he got a grinder account that you've been visiting? Who? Man, how you on him so hard? Damn. Who? Khalil, better Reggie White, better Lawrence Taylor. Oh, yeah, he's better than Lawrence Taylor. I don't even think he's the best defense player in the NFL. Well, obviously, you think you think Aaron Donald's better, which is okay. It's your opinion. I actually think Derwin James is up there, too. He's healthy. Let's really? see. Ab- ability is availability. You can't be hurt all the time. You see Jason Verrett's back? I forgot all about that dude. He was... <laughs> we talked yeah. about that yesterday. Yeah, we were like, Damn. wait, Jason Verrett still plays in the NFL? That's what I thought. Man, I was waiting to see Leslie O'Neal come out of there. <laughs> Bert Grossman is here. Bert, uh, okay, so let me ask you your opinion on Tom Brady and the Buccaneers now. I know it's midweek, but looking back at what they did to Green Bay, I mean, should we be taking the Bucs? I-, I took them seriously from the beginning just because they had Brady. What do you think yeah. about where they are right now? Whew. I don't, well, the bigger, the bigger answer is this, because I'm not sure on them. We talked about this last week, like the Browns and those teams have flashed that have been bad so long and the culture's been bad that I just don't, you know, one or two games doesn't matter. I think the bigger debate now that Cam Newton's out is Belichick's not looking like a genius anymore and Tom Brady's not looking like a, a system quarterback. I think that that's kind of been answered a little bit. Yeah, I brought that up and then Brady's and winning. I brought that up and then Browner slammed that idea too because I said, you don't, I said the game that they lost to in Denver by giving up six field goals, that like you would never see Tom Brady do that. And he's like, oh, they lost to the Dolphins last year because they had a miracle kickoff. I just said of the opinion that Brady has looked better without Belichick than Belichick has looked without Brady. I'd agree. But, but, but you guys are making this assumption under a pretext that not including that seven Patriots tapped out because of the COVID situation and Cam Newton, who had been rolling, by the way, missed the game because of COVID, came back on three days of practice into a game after coming off of COVID. So going forward, I think you're going to see a much better Patriot team. Bill Belichick himself said they didn't get a chance to practice much. And with a guy like that, with le- winning with less talent, You need practice. You need practice reps. So Mm. for everyone, all of a sudden, because they weren't saying this after week two, they weren't saying this after week three. So Cam goes down. They lose a game. Cam comes back. They look bad because they didn't practice. Now all of a sudden, Brady's winning the debate between who's having the better breakup. I just find it funny to be doing that. Again, let's do it at the end of the season when the Patriots are playoff team possibly winning the division because now we know the Bills are frauds, the Jets are terrible, and the Dolphins just switch quarterbacks. Mm. the division with Tom Brady in it is a much better division with the Panthers that now that the, the, uh, the Falcons got rid of their coach, <laughs> they seem to be magically good. He now. always brings up whoever the bears just beat first. The Panthers are good. Yeah. The well, they are beat, good. yeah now they're good. Yeah. They, they beat <laughs> yeah. the Chargers and somebody yeah. else. I just have one question. Look, 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 I just have one no. question. I have one question. If the Rams beat the bears, are the Rams then good? 
I listen, I'm the type of person I've already said this. They ain't played nobody. We the first team they gonna play. Okay. Y'all ain't played nobody either. Who you played? We beat Tampa Bay. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, see, you see on this Thursday what y'all night. do. On Thursday this is what y'all do. Y'all come at me. Y'all come at me with these slanted facts, okay? These these slanted views of things, okay? But I get a lot of All practice right. from Alex every day. So I'm used Let, to it. Last so I'm gonna go back at one more time. Brady is winning the debate because he made the transition at 49 years old and is still looking good. He didn't do what Jimmy Garoppolo did. Jimmy Garoppolo tore it up in New England, went to went to San Fran, and now he sucks. So he couldn't obviously make it without without Belichick, but Brady is easily even at forty nine fifty or but sixty. It, it, it's di- it, it, but when you're comparing the two, it's different to rate them because Bill Belichick's success from a coaching standpoint is the entire team. Brady's success is just simply his individual success. So it's more difficult to rate Bill Belichick as a head coach overseeing the entire program as the Tom Brady just throwing touchdowns and interceptions, which, by the way, he's throwing pick sixes now all of a sudden, too. Let's not forget about that. So at the end of the day, I think Bill Belichick is going to win this because his preparation is what made him great. Tom Brady's at Tom Brady's skill set is what made him great. And when you put those two together, you get magic. Now you're trying to do that with Bruce Arians. So, so Tom Brady, his skill set is what made him. What what is his skill set? He's got a, a an average arm. He can't move. He's white and slow. What is his skill set that 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 puts him apart? His mind. Well, let me answer yeah, this his his preparation. The his, same thing his as Bill mind. Belichick. And you know who played a huge part in that? Bill Belichick, because mm-hmm. he wasn't great. Listen, Tom Brady wasn't the number one pick in the draft. He was taken in the sixth round for a reason, okay? Teams passed over him repeatedly for a reason because he didn't do anything that was special. You know who did? Burt Grossman. That's why he was a top ten pick, okay? No, you, yeah, I know, but no quarterback can do anything special at, at that time in the Big Ten. They all ran the ball. There was no – there was. he shouldn't have went to that school. Peyton Manning was the number one pick out of Tennessee. He was slinging it, though. But you, but my, my point is this. If you're great, and you know this. <laughs> when you beat him great, on a point, he goes, well, let me start over with my point. Yeah, let no, me give no, you no. another version of my point. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 we get caught up in these rabbit holes. Though. Like we, what happens is we wind up getting into these long, extended, ridiculous arguments when I'm like, hey, Bert, I got another question. Are you watching the World Series? No. Oh, who cares about Bert's baseball opinion? He doesn't even watch the Padres. No, no, but he watched the Padres this year. That's why I'm asking him. You no, know, I want to tell you how this no, kind of changed your trajectory after I was making a point. <laughs> what are yeah. you saying, Browner? <laughs> I was making a very valid point, and you're going to just change the subject. I, I it see was, yeah, mean. I know, I know. Did you like the spoon? You like the spoon tonight with Cleo Mack. We heard the point. Yeah, I was, I got, I, I was falling asleep, man. Hey, was, is, are you guys going to the San Diego State game this weekend? <laughs> That's a great topic. Are we, going, are we going to the San Diego State football game this weekend in Carson? Yeah. yeah. Um, are they letting anybody go? I don't know. <laughs> you know I was trying to get Browner off again on a subject he wouldn't talk about. Talk, talk about falling asleep. You, Man. Uh, you, uh, you <laughs> Bert, who are they playing, Bert? You on LV? Mm. Mm. Brown, are you interested? You going to go? This not allowed is to go. Great. This is a great. This, this You're not allowed fantastic. to go, man. No, hell no, I ain't going to that. What am I going to that for? No, I listen. I'm focused on one thing, one thing only. Yo, man. Okay. The ball for it all. Okay. Monday night is where my focus is. I'm not going to drive up nowhere to watch somebody play in a rented stadium. Been there, done that, man. I'm good. If they'd have played a Queer Macca, I'd have went. Queer Macca? What's you said Queer Macca or Cleo Mac? Either or. Even says the place the same. Queer Maca, Cleo Mac, man, you got to get that man off your mind, dude. Bert, Damn. You know, Bert, 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 Bert. What's our show going to be called? Cleo Mac Hour? Listen, Bert, that guys, man's going to win me your house. Confirmed? Okay? Is that, that confirmed? That man's going to win me your house and your woman. I'm going to ride his back <laughs> and as my dog. long as it takes. And my overdrawn bank account. Yeah. Now, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll leverage it against your house. Alex, you That's asked a right. good question. Is, is, the, is the Bert and Browner – oh, excuse me. Is the Browner Burt show really about to oh, happen? Well, first of all, we need to figure that out. We is just it did Browner and Grossman, or is it Grossman and Browner? Is it Burt and JB? What's the first of all? Goes first? Who goes first? It's got to be the two B's. 
That that sounds better. Yeah, Browner and Burt. Yeah, in either direction. Or Burt and Browner. Yeah, in either direction, it doesn't matter. So is do I even gotta do I even gotta show up? Because he don't let nobody else talk. You can just pretend I'm on there and I'll just well, sit there. Listen, I'm just pretending someone else is there anyway, so I can get the show. So <laughs> oh, oh, I'm just glad I'm just glad you showed up. Yeah. I'll bring anything Bert, for you, man. Scott, are you gonna when I, when are you gonna I posed have, it to him? Well, go ahead, Alex. Are you gonna have editorial control over this? Or are you just gonna <laughs> trust are you just gonna trust that what they say is okay? <laughs> here's what I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna trust. You ready? Here's what I'm gonna trust. That that Bert is gonna say to Browner. No one wants to hear you talk about politics, dog. Like Bert sent me a message the other day. He's like, what's up with your boy? Like, why you always be talking about politics? Like, why is he even dipping his toe into that? Was that two days ago when he went off on Ice Cube and 50 Cent? Is that when it was, Bert? Yeah. Listen, yeah. Y'all, uh, look, y'all want to do this right now? Do what? Yeah. If you I heard Louis Farrakhan uh, endorse Trump now, too. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why this is why Scott like that's why I asked the question because Br- Jay Br- Bert might think that about Browner, but he'll egg him on and egg him on and egg him on until he gets what he wants. All right, let Listen, me ask you guys this question: You can't egg me. I'm a professional. You can't egg me on. <laughs> we egg you on all the time. It works. That's my role on this show. <laughs> my role on this show is to say stuff. Is to and, be egg. Yeah, it's to be egged and to entertain people. <laughs> really? My purpose on the Browner and Burt show or Burt and Brown or whatever the case may be is to drive the bus. So oh. you have to be, it, it, you have to put your thinker's cap on as you drive the bus, okay? Mm-hmm. It's the transition between our two segments. Will you guys talk about like stories outside of sports? For example, Alex brought it up earlier. We haven't gotten to it yet. Um, Jeffrey Tubin is, do you know who that is, Burt? Yeah. So Jeffrey Tubin's like a legal analyst on CNN who 20 plus Esther years Bader. ago, yeah. yeah, like 20 years ago, made his name, like, like nobody knew who he was, but he made his name during the OJ trial. It's on CNN like every day. And apparently he's on a Zoom call with a bunch of his colleagues and doesn't, according to him, doesn't think the camera's on, doesn't think the audio is on. And he's, he's doing his own personal business during a Zoom call. Now, guys, I want you to know, I want both hands to be seen right now, okay? We're, we're on a Zoom call. Everybody got all their hands up in the air. I don't ever just in the middle of a out. Zoom business call just go, you know what? I'm feeling it right now. So Jeffrey Tubin gets suspended because he's got caught busted jerking it on a Zoom call. And all of his colleagues, I guess, hearing it or seeing it. Saw I think it. They saw it. They saw it. They saw you know it? what I really like to see, though? If anybody come up, what he was actually watching that he was jerking off to. Yeah, he was, on, a, he was yeah. on another phone call doing some dirty talk. Yeah. But the thing is, it's so weird. It's like if you were, if, if you had somebody on a Zoom call and they were doing that, would you be like, is he, is he, is he watching Cleo Mac videos and jerking off? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Did you guys did see you guys, OJ? Did you guys see OJ? Anybody seen OJ's response? No. Well, here it is. All right. Here it is. Alex is sharing his screen. Damn. Jeffrey Tubin, at least Pee Wee Herman was in an X-rated movie theater. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I love how Juice ends every single tweet with I'm just saying. Shout out to Uncle Juice. Oh, come on, man. You see that picture of Bill Cosby, that mugshot they put out? The other what? day, have you seen that? The new They put out a mugshot of Bill Cosby yesterday. It looked like Grady from Sanford's son. You didn't see it? No, I didn't see that. He was smiling. Yeah, smiling weird. His hair was all out, like like clown on the side. It was it was sad. They gotta let Cosby out of jail because of COVID, man. They gotta let him out. It was sad. Let me take a so, look at it here. On the uh, Bur- on the Burton Brown on the Burton Browner show, what is the like? What is the purpose of the show? Is it sports or is it whatever comes up? Sports and entertainment. Mm-hmm. I'm not riding the bus. I'm not driving the bus. I'm, I'm riding it, so I don't have any say. It's sports and entertainment, man. It's sports and entertainment. Scott, did you give him a day yet? Um, I don't know. I was thinking like Tuesdays would be good. Or would it Scott, be you should at least do a, you should do a one day a week um, high school football one too. But they're supposed to start up in the next month. Would like to do that. So, you know, Tuesday um, would be Hank and Kurt, grumpy old men. If we can pull that off, I'm realizing that these guys are not, it's not Hank, it's Kurt. You talk about grumpy old men. I mean, Bavakwa is like dealing with hacksaw. I mean, he is just, God, he's high maintenance. Um, Burton Browner should be easy. 
You got the independent voter network that talks like all San Diego related issues. That's on Wednesday nights. I don't know, man, I'm ready. I mean, we want to add more local programming. So Bert and Browner or Browner and Bert sounds great. And then Grumpy Old Men is funny. I don't know, Browner, when are you ready to start, man? Listen, I am always ready to start as soon as possible. There's just some equipment issues that we need to tackle so we can make sure that this thing performs as well as the thing that we're doing right now because we can't be putting out subpar material. So most first and foremost, we make sure it looks good and it sounds good. And at that point, when we're comfortable with that, we'll put it out. So probably about a week or so. Mm-hmm. New show coming. Brown and Burke. New, new show alert. New show. Wow. And I'm letting you drive the bus after that. Wow. First of all, you know what that is. You've been in them techno clubs. Stop acting like you. No, I've never been in a techno, techno club. club. I have never been there. Tell me never another lie. Never took no ecstasy and never again in them techno clubs. You ain't never took no exit. Boy, boy, Dude, I'm straight, I'm straight old saying. school. I got a bo- straight vodka on the thing. You can't get out of that when you sit at a dusty bar. You don't go to techno places. <laughs> drinking a fruity drink with Zeman and Red Bull. Come on. You ain't – you. Can, so you're going to sit here with that face and tell me you ain't never took no ecstasy. Yep. Wow. What y'all talk to Tanya? <laughs> ain't never took steroids either. <laughs> 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 they never tasted vodka neither. Uh-huh. Hey, this is 50 minutes. Am I getting a raise? No raise Uh-oh. for you, but Burke Grossman is being brought to us we by are the done, though. Clinic. We are done. We're history. Are we out of here, Alex? Officially over. Okay, let's roll. So I can let's start masturbating now. I can start yeah. masturbating now. Wait, wait, wait. I uh, started on three, two, one. Now you can go. All right, great friends. Uh, for those of you that are still with us, uh, we, we wrap up here on YouTube and Facebook and all the audio podcast platforms. Radio is on to its next thing, which is called the Independent Voter Network. So if you're in your car, these are people that talk all San Diego related issues. And now, at least for the next two weeks, they're going to be talking a lot about election and uh, different measures that are on the ballots. I think you'll find it very educational. And so, uh, so you know, if you're on radio, well, you're not, you're with us. So radio is doing its own thing. Uh, Grande, Big Brown, uh, today's show got away from me somewhere. I don't know. We were talking World Series. We were talking Dodgers. We had a whole conversation about likable, unlikable fandom, how you become loyal or unloyal to a team or whose team you have love for and what teams you might not. And can you love more than one team? We had this whole conversation. And then the whole show seemed to get away from me. Was that a Burt issue? What do you think? Cougar Town. No. When we started, when Cougar Town came up, it started to slip away from us. I don't think it got away from you at all. I just think this is what we do. It was, it's fun. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the Burt one, I yeah, think it felt like you you just kind of let it go. You're like, this will end eventually. <laughs> <laughs> That's the vibe I got. You're like, yeah. yeah, there's five minutes, but they'll figure it out. Well, I think because Browner was still rambling on and on about something Khalil Mack related. And I was like, you know what? I've seen this movie before. Why are you so? Why y'all so? No, it wasn't. It wasn't Khalil Mack. It wasn't Khalil Mack. It was something you were going off today, like for three minutes, no joke about Bill Belichick and his preparation or something. And you lost me after like six. I zoned out. I zoned out. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, y'all can't handle these deep discussions about the uh, offense. There's a lot of things you're good at. Being you would never be good at Pete at uh, around the horn because you just you you got to condense those those arguments. You went three minutes about Bill Belichick's preparation. It was correct too. I know, but you got to figure out how to bring it down for that show. This show, you can do whatever you want. You know what I got to do today? So you guys know how we had these. Uh, we took all the television monitors from 1090, and we put them up in the studio. So yeah. I've got one that's on the far wall that was never on. It was put there so that it could be an ad TV behind you guys. And then I have the big screen, which is my TV that I want to use so I can actually watch what's going on in the world. You know, have some some stuff on. The big giant TV blew out. Doesn't work anymore. No way. Oh, yeah. wow. So I had to run the HDMI cable from the cable box to the TV on the wall over there, which is fine. It's a big TV and I can long see it. Cord. Fine. It's a long cord. And then the four monitors behind me are all just ad TVs. So the one that's the big one that we took from the radio station that blew out, I got a guy coming over today. I went to Costco yesterday. I finally broke down and went to Costco. And by the way, the Taco Tuesday tacos at Costco, the full tray with the chicken and the cheese. and you the got tacos, it again? It's so good, man. Mm. It's so good. Tacos are good. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I got this new TV from Costco, like a smart TV. And now I'm going to be able to have like game on far TV 
and using like the app over here. But the guy who's coming to do the work was like, well, let's take the big TV and let's put it up on the wall. And let's take that one off the wall and put it over here on the rack. And you know, I'm charging you by the hour. And I'm like, dude, no, man, just come over, put the TV it's on the rack. Man. Yeah. Put the TV on the rack, set up the app. So I don't have to deal with it. Show me how this one can have one game on this one. Can have the other night, I wanted Dodgers on one and Rams on the other. And I had to flip back and forth. And then I just gave up on the Rams game because I was all into the Dodger game. So I got to deal with that today. You won't hmm. be able to give up on the Rams game this Monday night. Did Artis uh, email you back? Uh, I talked to Amanda from 710. She's like, there's no credentials for this. Yeah. No, good luck. He emailed me back. Yeah. What he he's like, mm, we're not letting anybody in. Yeah. Like, and then he's like, and the application process closed on Monday. How about, would we ever consider doing a Monday night football podcast? Why not? No, no, absolutely mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You, not. you get, you get one show from me. Yeah. Well, not this Monday night. Well, not no, this would Monday. be the Monday night. This would be the Monday night. Yeah. If you're watching the bears. We're watching the Rams. I'm cheering for Aaron Donald. You're cheering for Khalil Mack. That'd be funny. I don't want people to see me like that. Mm. Are you going to seven ten? That's why. No, 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 no. I gotta, uh, I gotta watch my baby. So I'll be watching from home. <laughs> watching the baby while watching your yeah. baby. She was too big for that now. Yeah, she's not that big. You haven't seen her in a while, Scott. She ain't that baby no more. Yeah. Yeah. All right, listen. Final thought. You got one, Brown? Monday night, the brawl for it all. I guarantee. Hmm. Rays don't win tonight. If the Rays don't win tonight, they will get. No, nah, they won't get swept. They'll lose in five. I loved your uh, the graphic you put up earlier. That it's got it's got P A D Pod and then R A Y S Pod Rays so like yeah. Padre fans rooting for the for the Rays. Mm -hmm. I like that. I thought that was really funny. That was really shout cool. out Joe Rigby. Yeah, Joe. Better, listen, y'all better not do that. Y'all gonna lose to the Dodgers twice this year. Mm. You hey, such listen, a Dodger homer right now. I'll just say to everybody who's listening, go hit up Alex's debate that he wrote today on the air. Are the 2020 Dodgers a likable team? Nope. Right now, 75% say no. 25% say yes. Get in there and uh, and see what everybody has to say. Oh, by the way, no, the percentages are different. 53% say no, 46% say yes. Interesting. So we're pretty split down the middle right now about are the Dodgers a likable team. Get into it. Make sure you download our our, our app, Sided Debates. And, uh, and listen, until tomorrow, everybody, peace. Shout out Uncle Juice.